we're seeing the problem from the two sides. You've played the game. You see the utility, but basically you're unfulfilled by it. I have been unfulfilled from the outside, lacking clarity about what it is I actually wanted to say. And I've probably set a pretty high bar for what I would need to do in my own mind. But we're actually both feeling the same problem, which is the low quality of human connection on Instagram. And we are live. Hey. Oh, cool. Hello. Look at this. Hey. Who's across that? Across the United States. So Who I've is done that a strange I've voice? done a plan for tonight's episode, and it's going to be an hour and 45 of us congratulating ourselves for figuring out this technology. <laughs> and then like 15 minutes where we riff on audio or some bullshit. Or like how we feel. Nice. <laughs> We're about feelings. So, well, yeah. So we have Congrats, Michael guys. <laughs> on, Michael is remote, he's in New York, we have him on video, we'll post some pictures on the Instagram, or you'll have seen them by the time this comes out. We have Dylan, our producer, and they're calling in and it's just awesome. Yep. We are very happy. Yeah, Dylan put a plan together for us and here we are. As any uh, well-suited producer would do, <laughs> yes. they executed a plan with little Surprise. to no oh. friction. John, John intercepted that compliment there quickly. He, he, he made sure that no one got credit. To, you know, don't get too big ahead of here, right? You, know, you, no, just, wait, I, you just did what you're paid to I do. Love, I know, I love, I love when people get stoked on things that we should be capable of doing with ease. I said to Rory just before we got on, with very minimal troubleshooting, we got this sorted day of attempt. It's just awesome. It's like, yeah. oh, engineers that can do their job are talking about how to do their job. It's pretty cool. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Glad it worked out. Weird flex. Weird, <laughs> Happy, weird yeah. flex. Weird yeah. flex. <laughs> yeah, we should mention that proper planning is key to all of this. And Dylan had a pretty dope diagram for us. Michael. Yeah. You've been away. You've been on the road. I know we've all been in touch with you separately and somewhat together. It's been quite an epic journey. Talk to us. Tell us what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what LA looks like from your vantage point right now. I mentioned that I wanted to get away from LA for a bit. And so I did that, drove across country, had a uh, very sanitary road trip, <laughs> in case anyone's checking. <laughs> that was- <laughs> The best kind. <laughs> every day was this military grade cleaning <laughs> of like every room, surface. Just thinking about getting out of the car when and where, like. It had to be so strategic, but it was kind of fun. It was like a game that I really enjoyed playing. The reward was seeing the whole country, which for all of its chaos and craziness, it's a really beautiful place or has a ton of beautiful parts and really great people throughout. And so I got to see a few people that I knew driving across and then ended up in New York, quarantined there, got a COVID test there, you know, instant test, got it right away. Apparently, doctors are like, it's 50% accurate. So oh, that was cool. helpful. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> sick. I was like, so should we just flip Let's a coin just, here yeah. and then we go? Let's just flip um, a coin with my dad's life. Just like yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Roulette, so then, black or red. Like, right. Fuck. So I was like, this is pretty serious, you know? For those of you that don't know, my dad was uh, going through chemotherapy all of last year. And he's cured of cancer, which is amazing. So clap for that. You're here. I was with him three months at the end of the year last year, and I really dug being home, kind of having this break from LA. And then I realized I could do it again. So I figured, you know, let me drive across, see the country, be with family at the end of it. So I got another COVID test after that 50-50 one, after another 12 days of quarantining. Don't have COVID. And then I've been with my dad ever since and my stepmom and my stepgrandma, and uh, we've been cooking every day and been going for like four to seven mile walks every day. This neighborhood's super dope. It's like not gridded at all. So mm. there's just weaving paths all around. And like, I could just walk and I literally have no idea where I'm going ever, but I know directionally where I came from. Mm -hmm. So I'll just take another winding path back. It's just been great, really haven't been thinking about LA at all. I've been thinking about where I am, what it offers, and um, you know how I'm feeling there. What are you listening to when you're on those walks? 
if anything? Sometimes nothing. Today I was listening to a YouTuber talking about different business models for agencies because that's something I've been thinking about, how to structure the agency, podcasts, sometimes our podcasts, sometimes there was a Knowledge Project episode. Yeah. I remember being home in Long Island last year. I don't remember feeling this way or it had been a long time, but I went for a run, which I, I never do. I tend to ride bikes and do other forms of exercise, but I went for a run and I had my AirPods in and I remember putting Good Kid Mad City on. Uh, mm. Oh no, I was actually at that time with Section 80. It was like, I haven't listened to Section 80 by Kendrick mm. in forever. I went for a run, it was feeling really good. And then I took the AirPods out and it was just dead quiet. You yeah. know, we live in LA, it's downtown. There's not, eh, it's quiet in the arts district, but it's not dead quiet. Someone came out to take the trash out and you could hear the trash rolling from start to finish of the driveway. And at this point, I'd had a, about a year's worth of meditation every day. And I was like, oh, let me just listen to the sound of that pal like all the way, right? So mm. when, you're, when you're walking in nature, there's man-made sounds in addition to natural sounds. So we're always listening to something and I'm craving the quiet walk to hear the sounds that when you're sitting in meditation practice and you're brought to the attention of sounds and we can't choose the next sound and sounds come and go and whatever. It's different when you're in nature. It's different when you're not in your place. Like I, I know when the, the wine fridge turns on. I know when my actual refrigerator turns on. I, I know when the air conditioner turns on. You hear these sounds, you hear the birds outside. They're quite specific, but when you're only in nature, there's just, I mean, it could be dead silent mm. and there's still something to hear. So I'm, I'm, I'm gathering you were having some of these moments and yeah. I'm just living vicariously through you. I miss those. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. I mean, I don't really want to clutter my my ears with other sound when there's such beautiful sounds outside. Yeah. Sometimes nothing at all. And sometimes like wind blowing against a tree or a car like really, really far away. Like I think that's a really beautiful sound when yep. it's like really far away, <laughs> not like 10 feet away. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, but you can hear the pitch change as it gets yeah. further away and around a bend if there's a mountain or trees involved. Yeah, there's a mm -hmm. lot to hear. There's so much and that's been really good. And I've also been taking phone calls. I even had a therapy session while on a walk and mm -hmm. that was easily the best one I've had in a long time. Just wandering, meandering in our conversation and then also physically. So that was super cool. I listened to, I think it was Sam Harris's most recent podcast about attention. A couple of days ago on my bike ride for the first time, I listened to it again today, not on a bike ride, because the entire time I was on the bike ride listening to it, they were talking about multitasking and how it's impossible to do. Even if you're on a run or on a walk, you'll still come in and out of focus of the thing that you're trying to focus on. And I thought it was ironic because I was listening to the podcast, riding a bike and thinking of a recipe to cook for dinner that night to the point where I had to stop to write the recipe down. And I decided to pause the podcast in order to write the recipe down only because I had heard them say that there's no way you can be listening to this podcast and do anything else. This is insane. Like where technology is asking so much of us and a lot of it for benefit, but I'm just craving those excuses to not have any of it, even though it's mm. so enticing to want to learn things and there's so much access to so much information. Probably shouldn't say this about podcasts because I want people to listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to understand boredom and sit with it and have fun in boredom. And a lot of it came from this podcast I was just listening to even again, second time today, and then hearing what, you know, your four to seven, eight mile walks, that's the best way to do it because you're being productive, right? You're not sitting on the couch. You could do this sitting on the couch. You could do this sitting anywhere. You could do this literally anywhere. But a walk, you're still doing something. You're still activating muscle groups. You're still, mm -hmm. I don't know, just really taking this to heart. And I'm, I'm missing it because in a week from today, I would be home in New York having the ability to do this. And I'm not going to get that this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to find another place to go do that. I ask a question, Michael. No. When you describe this, is LA worth it? When you describe this peace and joy, and is it worth being here? What do you think about the trade-offs right now? I mean, I can only really speak to me and I could only somewhat speak to me. So <laughs> yeah. saying it for everyone is gonna be difficult, but sure. is it worth it? Um, you know, it's funny, I was talking to my dad today and he was asking something similar about LA. He was like, if you're in the music industry, do you have to be in LA? And I was like, well, kind of. 
there's a lot of people there that are, depending on the genre of music, that are making pop music, hip hop music in LA. So if you're trying to connect with people, the odds and the ease of connecting are going to be easier. The labels don't need to go far to find talent. So they're going to be looking where they are. So it's not that you need to be there, but it's definitely way, way, way easier. So depending on what you're optimizing for, if you're optimizing for opportunity and growth, locations are going to matter. If you're optimizing for a nice lawn and the sound of a car really far away, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot to offer right outside my window right now. So is it worth it to me in this moment at uh, 1018? No, this is worth it right now where I am and this is mm -hmm. working and it's been satisfying and, and useful and helpful for me. Does it have utility? Absolutely. I think every place does like your childhood bedroom has utility and so does your grandma's house and also your apartment or your home. Mm, my you know, childhood uh, home has no utility. I'm just going to interject there. <laughs> there's no utility. I mean, it, there's something there. I mean, well, whether it's a memory or, or, or a reason, I don't, reason to forget. I think like... <laughs> Wait, really? That's yeah, dark? Yeah, that feels dark to me. Sorry. Oh, wow. Sorry, Mike. I mean, yeah. my parents moved three times since I lived with them. Like, yeah. mm, there's no childhood Yeah, home. what's your child? Yeah. There is no childhood My parents home. live in, mm. in, the, in the home I grew up in, so. These are examples. I'm not saying it has to be that. I'm saying for me it is. And so there's utility or meaning or history in these things. And you were saying, is LA worth it? Yeah, definitely. The reason we're even recording this today is because of LA in many ways, you know, mm -hmm, like, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's worth it. And I think, you know, to John's point where he's saying, I'm seeking these long walks and things like that. You can do that in LA, but it's not really what it's there for in a way. It's just different. And so I think it's hard to say that any city is worth it or not because there's so much value in each city and every city that I've seen for different people at different times. Mm. For me right now at this time, yeah, no, it's, it's not really worth being there. Like for my buddy, Brandon, who's staying in my apartment, it is worth it for him. He was mm. in Seattle. We were talking through text while I was out here. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to be home for a minute. You're cooped up all the way up there. It could be cool to see another city. Like him and I have traveled many times before. He's mm. a, like a close friend of mine. And I've stayed at his place in Seattle. He showed me the city and he hasn't really had the opportunity to experience LA at all. So I was like, you know what? Just stay at my crib pay the utilities and we'll call it even. So he's staying there now. And I checked in with him. I was like, how do you like LA? And he had so many positive things to say. And it was really nice to read that and hear that. Clearly, there's nothing wrong with the city. There's things that you can get from it. And he's getting so much value. So there's a time and a place for different things. Right now, I was like, I don't need to be here. I've been here enough. I was open to seeing another place. Yeah. And wandering for hours. <laughs> I think it's important to sort of remember that there are people suffering and thriving in every kind of place. There are people in paradise mm. or, you know, what we would imagine mm. paradise. There's so someone in the south of France on 15 acres with 12 bedrooms who's having a shit day and there's someone in a slum somewhere who's happier than that dude. It's not directly related to where you are or what you have, you know? Yeah. I'm reminded of the conversation we had at your apartment when Spider and I went over the day we spent with you where we were talking about your future work life, I guess. It was kind of an informal unfuck session. And one of the things that became apparent was this realization that you have the freedom to do this, the way your work is structured, because it's almost all online, remote, Google Meets or whatever, that you can be wherever you need to be and that travel is important to you. It can actually be part of the conception of your business rather than something that disrupts your business, you know? So you're just doing it, which is great. Thanks, man. I mean, I was talking to Maurice from PMC the other day and he was like, man, I'm so jealous with this whole trip. And I was like, I, I, I think he also meant inspired. And I think like, you know, he thought about, wow, like what does it look like to take a break? And he's definitely not a guy that takes many. <laughs> um, he's a hardworking dude. So it was... It was kind of this tangential benefit of like me structuring my life this way and the business this way that I could be here. I was actually in this living room on the phone with him, um, you know, 
And that could then inspire someone to maybe have this small realization of like, breaks are important, family is important, you know, uh, how am I structuring my own work and life and, you know, professional life. So I don't know if he, he had that exact realization. I don't, don't want to put words in his mouth, but you know, there was definitely some acknowledgement of like, wow, you know, admiring what I'd done, the fact that I was taking off, the fact that I was going home. So, and I also wanted to just say every person I've spoken to, like I had a few client meetings, some people that I didn't even know knew my dad was sick. Everyone asked how my dad was doing. And I just, I don't know, wanted to give a shout out to every person that said that it was just really sweet. And, um, you know, it's cool being remote and being able to talk to people like, and, you know, they feel close. So, mm. yeah. That, <clears throat> that makes me think of, uh, just the, the work life balance and just other important values and, and not getting the chance to go home, um, this year, uh, feel, feels odd and, and something I'm sure other people are going to struggle with, uh, this year, uh, specifically engineers and music makers and creatives that work from home is hmm. when do you stop working? This real no, I mean, for me, I mean, the studio's 15 feet from where we're all sitting right now. I can work at any time. Um, like how do I just shut off on December 18th or whatever, whatever day I would have gone home and, and someone hits me up and says, yo, can you do this thing? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I don't, I don't actually want to do it. Right. Like mm -hmm. I'm saying it now. So me now mm -hmm. and me in two weeks, I know will be different, but the me now is real and I don't want to do any work in two weeks. I want to have a winter break or whatever the, the title will be. Um, and I'm, I'm sure other people are feeling this way. I mean, Roy, what are you going to do? Um, what do you, what do you think? I mean, this? you know, we talk some about my, uh, the dysfunction in my relationship with work, uh, a couple of episodes back. And um, for me, the, the, I am either all on or all off. Once I spin down, like it's a giant flywheel and I don't, mm. I don't spin back up easily. I'm not excited to get back to work once I've had a break. Mm. I don't really ever want to work again once I've had a break. <laughs> um, it's very slow to, to, to spin back up. Mm. And then when I do, it's, you know, we're back to, we're back to what we what we've talked about. Um, so the hope is this year that we had a really great Thanksgiving, uh, spider came over and it was just a really, we sort of prepped for it. We got some nice things in. The girls were excited to have company because they've been so locked down. Mm -hmm. uh, all the girls, and my wife included. And um, and we had a really great day and it felt special. It felt like that was a holiday. That was a... Because, you know, for me, historically, you know, Thanksgiving would have been like, well, we go and spend it with my wife's family. And it's like, it, there's a kind of a formality to it. It's mm -hmm. like, um, and um, what we had was was not formal, you know, after a glass or two of wine, Spider and I were scootering around the neighborhood with the kids in the dark with head torches and it was Protecting very... Protecting humankind from aliens. Yeah, we oh, were, yeah, you know, it was an alien as one in, does. As one does, yeah. invasion. And it was really, um, it was great. And it just felt like very real and present and in the moment with my mm -hmm. kids who, who have this wonderful way, like every child of pulling you back to the moment. It's like, I don't really care about instrumental deliverables. I want you to, my, uh, Mirabelle's thing at the moment is, uh, can you do clock, clock? And I swing her like a grandfather clock mm. and click like a, you know, tick like a clock. And then at some point the alarm goes off and I drop her. You know, it's like mm. a silly game. So every night when I leave or every day when I leave, including tonight, you know, she's like, can we do this? You know, can we play this? Can you swing me upside down? Can you? And it's just like, forget the world, be here. You know, it's, and it's, yeah. it's, uh, I had a great conversation with a friend of mine in, in Ireland who's going through a, a difficult patch and um, just about the, the incredible opportunity that, that having children is to, to be present and to be a better version of yourself every day. They're, they're, they're so forgiving and so open to your best self on a given day. And it's just this constantly re-upped opportunity to show up and make a better decision, S say, say something a better way, model a better behavior. It's really, it's really wonderful, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't even remember what the so question is. Are you going to, are you going to work? Oh yes. Um, I, the hope is to, is to do less work. We've got a, we've got a run of stuff that's just about to drop with <clears throat> Unfuck and I've got a pretty busy slate mastering wise. Um, and if it all sort of lines up, 
uh, I'll be in good shape sort of going into the holidays financially and mm. hope to take some downtime. Yeah. And there's a there's an incentive to create a window where we isolate, test and can spend time then with my wife's parents. Right. right. Uh, my wife's uh, mom and, and husband. Uh, if we don't, like if I'm doing this or meetings or I can't be there or bring them into our house, it's just not, it's not safe enough, you know. Yeah. Uh, low risk, but not zero risk. Um, we need to create zero risk because they're in their 70s, 80s. Yeah, you know? and that sounds worth it. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. should do that. Sounds great. Yeah, I would like to, yeah. you know, so that's that's the ambition. Christmas is very important to me. It's a very, it, Christmas in Ireland is is epic. I mm. mean, it's it's a it's a two or three week thing and it's it's just, it's got a very different rhythm to hear. Um, it's it's a really important celebratory time. Uh, so I still have, I sort of carry that. And then like, you know, when I'm here and holidays like Labor Day mean nothing to me, yeah. you know, it's like, it's just, yeah. it's just words. Yeah. It's like, well, some people are barbecuing. I don't, I don't really understand. Yeah. Um, you know, but Christmas is, is an important one for me, you know. Yeah. What's different about Christmas in Ireland? Um, I think, <clears throat> I think it's, it's less um, commercialized. It's less, you know, here there's a, there's a very definite hum to the machine uh, of sort of commerce and work and achievement and perf and and the 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 project of perfection that we've talked about this sort of American idealism of like where you know every day we're fitter or taking better vitamins or you know have optimized some system or spreadsheet or something. Um, in Ireland, there's a lot more sort of um, in Europe generally, in my experience, a lot more acceptance of what is, um, and that's like we've discussed before on air. That's that that's a positive and a negative. Um, I need people who are pushing to invent the um, vaccine for coronavirus. I don't need people who are cool with what is. Uh, you know, we need we need the dynamism of America in the world. We and need HRTF in our headphone technology. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Can't wait. Uh, which reminds me, the uh, the uh, spatial audio button on AirPods yeah. is seems mm. to be about emptying the contents of your stomach. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's vile. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's not super crazy. Yeah. It's just it's not. It was hilarious. It was like, oh, if I've taken an overdose of pills, oh, I wow. would press this button and eject them. It's that like, bad. Awful. It just. Oh, I hate that feeling. Just awful. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's not good. Uh, anyway, that's a side track. Oh, that's it's a bummer. Um, well, that's a bummer. They had a chance to. Okay. I was. I was so psyched on yeah. Disney Plus to hear it because in the Disney Plus mm. app you could try it and like I put my phone to my left and I like walked away and like all the sounds now all on the left <laughs> I'm like what is good like it was following the phone oh that's odd okay yeah, oh because yeah, you, oh, you turn your head and yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah, relative it's to the phone weird it was and, very uh, weird are, are, are they aware that this is a this is a fail are they gonna? Uh, well, I haven't, probably, I haven't hit up Tinder. Apple exactly. doesn't like you to. Know, uh, I don't know. That was the, that was the yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sure they, they'll perfect it over time. They have very <laughs> smart people in the building. So yeah, um, or the, uh, the building. So I'm confident that it'll that it'll be. They've better. historically been pretty great at releasing things when they're highly, highly functional. Mm -hmm. um, not not maybe not perfect, but highly functional. Yeah. Um, so I was just, you know, it, it, that's a, that's a bit of a disappointment that mm -hmm. it would be that obvious, um, or is it only that obvious to audio engineers? Well, I just listened to the demo. But this yeah. is, so Michael's talking about a little bit of a different thing because you can just turn on spatial audio at any moment. Okay. Right. You just, you go into the Bluetooth mm -hmm. setting for the thing, you can turn it on and, right. and it takes the sound and it sort of puts it out in front of you a little bit, mm -hmm. which doesn't always sound better. Mm. I haven't, I mean, I actually haven't heard it sound better mm -hmm. than not doing it. Mm -hmm. So you can play records, you know, like whatever you're listening to, you can just turn it on. But Michael's talking about something different. It's like audio that's made for that. Yes. And so, and some kind of head tracking mm -hmm. where the phone and the AirPods collectively understand where the head is and position, mm -hmm. you know, in connection to the phone. Yes. And ideally you're looking at the phone, it's in front of you. Mm -hmm. So that's where it would sound like it's in the center. But if mm -hmm. you move it over over to the left, yeah, mm -hmm. then <laughs> yeah. then all of a sudden the the perspective of the mix shifts, and that's mm -hmm. I don't that's wild. Yeah. I mean, I some think augmented like, reality shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think all the pieces are there, and like the quality is there. It's just that the output isn't there yet and i think that's kind of what they've done historically is like they set the app store up knowing there will be apps in it and they'll be dope but like 
the infrastructure was there and now people need to build on it. Like I could imagine gaming on iPhone with spatial audio will be, will be insane. Will be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that'll just take things to a whole nother level. I think, you know, Disney plus is, it was like the star Wars Mandalorian documentary worth watching. Really, really fascinating in terms of process and how they mm. created the, the show. Um, but, you know, they were probably, they got word of the spatial audio thing. They wanted to be one of the first and we're trying it out. And I mean, it's it's interesting right now, but it's definitely not, you know, there isn't a, a clear voice yet of what's what feels good uh, with that technology. Yeah. We're headed it's to coming. a place where, you know, virtual reality visuals and audio will be indistinguishable from real life and mm-hmm. uh, it will be here very quickly uh, in yeah. you know i mean in a nanosecond you know in terms of the history of man right and um, we're headed there and there's it's just going to be a bit bumpy on uh, you know on our way there um, mm-hmm. i'm i was surprised at how malformed this uh, <laughs> release was you know from uh, it, but uh, you know it's it's just sort of leaking out yeah into our consciousness so that we're comfortable when yeah, it's ready there's, there's some of that you know and, and uh, our whistle is being wedded yeah. to to a, apply it to the creative world i mean it, it's immediately what you just said reminded me of us releasing this podcast and like episode one two three we're like are we even doing this right? Like, is this good? Should we release these? You know, like it, there's a bumpy start, um, but it threw that momentum very much as Seth Godin um, sort of uh, frame of mind, like through the momentum, you then start creating better and better things. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think the fact that they put it out, the fact that it's there, the fact that it does track your head and know where the phone is, that's amazing in and of itself. Yeah. And then what they can do with it is just going to be the next tier. I personally think gaming is going to be the one big area where it really shines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and augmented. Yeah, augment, yeah. Apple mm-hmm. are going to make some very serious plays in in, in the sort of augmented reality yeah. space um, soon. Yes. Yeah, this new processor um, chip is really... They've been mm-hmm. teasing pretty hard. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the, the, you know... When the when the sort of realized version of what a Google Glass could be, the Apple Glass, whatever it looks like, mm-hmm. when that arrives, it will be a very different, um, will be a very different experience. And and the way that I mean, I see I see the girls at home when they have a question. To um, both my kids are on a kick at the moment of being obsessed with parrots and macaws. They're just watching every documentary. They have a YouTube channel that they follow. <laughs> which is these people who have uh, parrots and macaws, very intelligent <laughs> birds, it. right? And they're just, they're printing, they're burning through fucking laser uh, toner cartridges, like, you know, they're going out of style, printing pictures of parrots and macaws and coloring them in. And Ellie has a workbook of like her project and stuff she's written and um, they're obsessed. Um, but uh, I had a point with where I was going. We're talking about spatial audio, uh, no, AR, uh, AR, VR. augmented reality. Yes, of but but reality. what I what's interesting is like tonight, just before I left, Mirabel was uh, I grabbed my wife's phone and was asking uh, Siri, "Hey Siri, how many parrots are there in the world?" That was her question, and it's this like you go to Siri for answers to grand questions like that. Dad mm. doesn't know how many parrots there are in the world. Mm. Like Dad knows where the TV remote is. Or, you know, where <laughs> mom is. But yeah, may- maybe. <laughs> but but like these big questions, it's just, you know, because it's something I'll do sometimes if, you know, mm-hmm. Ellie will say, how old are the pyramids? Like, have they been there for a week? And it's like, no, they're old. Oh. But I don't know how old. So like, yeah. let's ask Siri, right? Or, you know, and so they go to that source for information and the 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 experience for them of augmented reality. And I mean, we have... We had 10 years ago, video games, like there's a, the first one that I remember being commercially released was a skier game and it was a downhill slalom ski game and you wore a, you know, a, a, a sort of an ECG sensor on your, on your skull cap thing and it would, you could think left or right and it would move the skier mm-hmm. left or right. Sure. Um, there's a lot of neurofeedback been yeah, around yeah, a long time. Exactly. Cause, it's, cause it's, it's and it's advancing, it's advancing all the time. So the where we're headed with this sort of access, the ease of access to information and sort of how clumsy the interface of Wikipedia will seem in time. Oh, Mm. you had to stop grandpa and type in the words, how many parrots are there? You didn't just think it and know. Like, 
that's intriguing to me, you know, yeah. for them. Um, and there, that's where we're headed is a, is a sort of a, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It makes me think of, just, a, of a few things like, okay, how many parrots are there in the world? And all of a sudden they can be in a rainforest and there's parrots around them, right? You can transport yeah. to a VR land of that. Like people are talking about how you'll never go on vacation again because you could sit in your bedroom and you could be in Paris. Like I want to be in Paris. I want that baguette. I don't want the baguette that my mom brought home. And I want to pet my When McCall. I'm 14, you know, and, and I want to dad McCall. doesn't have to buy one. But then I just you. had this really funny thought or of, of what if like when you're mixing records or you're producing records and you're inside Pro Tools, and you're like a little version of yourself, like Mario and Luigi. <laughs> Sounds fucking You're awful. jumping on faders oh to oh lower them. <laughs> it's just like such a nightmare. That right? Is, spray painting and automation. Yeah, 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 exactly. That spray painting. That just sounds like hell. That's yeah. like a that's I mean, like you a knock nightmare. on the plug in, it activates the, the, the GUI, and then you can turn the knobs. Yes. And you're but what, in if it. The, yes. what if the faders are like palm trees? Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. And it's you know, all like, if there's a video game of Pro Tools and we're in it, you know Waves is the bad guy. <laughs> Like wave, oh, waves, waves is the waves is the boss. Oh my god, I felt I felt kind of yeah. bad on live with Matt Rad. I've been going in on waves and like I don't know. I think I've lost all chance of anybody taking me seriously in this world because I just hate on waves so much. I can't remember who it was this week told me that since they got PMCs, they they stopped using the C six. Yes. Oh, that's a huge win. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you who it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't want to. Once they open their this. eyes, they stop sticking a fork in their hand. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> like what? I I had is, another. Is, a, is CLA a big boss? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the, in the, in the, yeah, uh, CLA. Yeah, big, yeah, I don't know. I don't right? know where he would play in the in the uh, gaming pantheon. I'm going to betray my ignorance of modern gaming. Uh, <laughs> Michael, Memes. Michael, what do you got? You had something probably more I, valuable than this. Yeah, I have something gaming related. I've been playing like way too much Call of Duty mobile on iPhone. And uh, I think it's one of the greatest games. <laughs> Just go back to nature. Just go back yeah, to nature. I split my time between, yeah. the, <laughs> between two nature. worlds. Yeah. Um, what, and I just <laughs> thought of this thing today as I was playing it. Um, and it's, it's actually super relevant. So... Um, <laughs> It's a 10 versus 10 player game. You have to get up to 50 kills in the in the match and um kills, like sometimes said. sometimes I did thank, say thank it. You. I don't know if we're going to be Thank you for emphasizing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um or we could say disappearances of characters. <laughs> the politically correct. Yeah, yeah, I don't know anymore, but <laughs> um, so um some days I start the game and I'm like amazing like i feel like i'm just like the best player in the whole round and other times i'm like just not doing it I'm, i i lose where where's the button <laughs> i'm like fumbling to find the controls and whatever so this round where i'm playing and like i just keep getting killed like i respawn and i get killed again and again and i'm like disappearing I, of your i'm character. disappearing again <laughs> and again and um i'm like we're definitely losing this round and i look at the score and the team's winning and mm. in this moment, I had this realization of like, it's just, it was a really great metaphor for the the value and benefit of teams that like, even though one member is losing in a moment or one member is winning in a moment, like the collective win of the team is a win, is a move forward. Like I could have lost every single time I respond, I could have disappeared, um, but the team could have still won. Um, and I could have gotten one kill that could have been the final one. Right. So it's just, it, I don't know. I think it's interesting seeing team dynamics in this small little game. <laughs> it's a weird metaphor. Um, it's, it's not a small game, I by the way, in, you're talking about call of duty. In, in the, <laughs> but I, I think in, in the Physically modern small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. gaming yeah. world, that's probably why most people are there to observe systems and game dynamics. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. That's what mm. people are thinking about. I am, I'm wondering if maybe LA is not worth it, but it might be necessary for you. You know, just in terms of how you use your time. Maybe you should be here, you know? That, uh, that um, sounds wild. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. Uh, I enjoy it. It's a nice break from the day. Um, it's a phase. And it's a phase Michael's going through. It's definitely His a Call phase of Duty phase. Through. Yeah, mm. there will be a moment where I'm like, mm, all right, no more games. But it's fun. Yeah. I will say it's fun. I'm not promoting it. I'm not prescribing <laughs> it to anyone that's listening. We don't want to be sponsored. You, You're but, not sponsored by Clark. But I will say that if you do play, please add me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be it would be funny if over like 10 episodes, Michael just keeps calling out, you know, shouting out 
Call of Duty and just gets oh. more and more bling. Every time he shows up, <laughs> he's like in a bigger house with more and more. It's like two chicks and he's got gold chains. And there's like a Lambo parked in the living room. No one knows why. And and he just, just somehow tie in Call of Duty yeah. metaphors every time. <laughs> yeah. And, and our audience are just like lapping it up and just subscribing or whatever you yeah. do with Call of Duty. Yeah. And then I'm in esports and I'm winning. <laughs> I'm in the Olympics. So. It, sound, it sounds like you're referencing, I, I forgot his name, but the, the most recent... Uh, uh, knowledge project um, oh. leadership uh, episode we were messaging about the other day on my list mm. of things to he, talk about the guy the 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 person being interviewed by Shane uh, discusses the idea of teams being um, every member being a leader mm. um, and, and every member having autonomy and responsibility and it's decided upon by the team leader what everybody's leadership role is and that they bring to the table. Um, and I've been trying to think about teams that way to begin with. Um, I was thinking about Seth Godin today. I was reading a bit of the book, <clears throat> the practice that Spider gifted us last time. And uh, I was talking, I was, you know, I really related to his, his bit on that talent um, mm. is, is different than skill, mm. right? Um, and, Can I ask a question before you start? Yeah, please. So you, is it Randall Stutman? Yes. Is that the guy? Yes, Randall. So you and, because I had this on my list of things I wanted to talk about tonight, yeah. you and mm. um, Michael independently were both like, this fucking podcast is fire. It's incredible. Mm. I've listened to it twice. I'm taking notes. Like the a rave review in our thread, right? Yeah. Um, which we do often for stuff we like. Um, so I tried to listen to it and I hated it. I got 45 minutes in and I, I just could not, I got nothing. Really? Except annoyed mm. at the dude. Um, I, there was no resonance. There was no, I didn't believe what he was saying. I didn't care about what he was saying. But I know, and, and I said to Spider the other day on the call, I was like, this thing landed with two people who I, who I really uh, respect, but also have chosen to be bound to, for my, for, to learn from, right? So I wanted to ask you guys to explain to me Fuck. What I was missing. To, I feel to, so left out. I was so busy listen, listening to our podcast and I never listened <laughs> to it. That's okay. I feel and, like part of it is your adversity to the corporate structure and corporate language. I uh, well, Interesting, because I, I, I was aware of that, but I was trying to, I was trying to connect to, I just, there was literally nothing. It felt like sand pouring between my hands, like between my fingers. It mm. was just like, he would say these words and I was just like, I got nothing. It's, I'm, I'm trying to hold it. And it just kept, it, it, nothing's uh, connected to me. Um, so I, I'm, yeah. Anyway, I, I just wanted to say that so that as you guys talk about it, maybe you could kind of maybe be a bit more one-on-one mm. -on -one about it so that mm. to bring me up to speed and hopefully I, make it useful I was for a bit, people. I was a mm. bit using it as a transition to how I think Seth Godin is better than that dude. Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but I would love if Michael could take a stab at what you're asking, if he has any thoughts. Or just what you liked about it. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what landed? Why? Tell me. I, what I really, I just pulled up the notes that I took on it. Um, what stood out to me was the topic of, uh, I believe he called it integrative thinking. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for me, like anyone that's introducing different models of thinking, uh, different ways of um, solving complex problems, that's always very interesting to me. Um, and just the extent at which he explores um, how to combine ideas in different ways that really stood out to me. Like uh, basically f he, he said, finding both edges, finding out what I really liked. He said, w find out what works best for two opposing things. Like if you're interested in, you know, the podcast that has you know, very clear topics and one that is free form, what are the, like, let's, or just rather, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Let's say just name two podcasts that you really like and find the best things about them and f then figure out what ratios of uh, how to combine those positive assets together might make something new. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That was a portion of it. That was a big it. standout. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. musical innovation. I mean, that's... Yeah. That's yeah, I mean... Progress. Yeah, it's just <laughs> his framework for it and his perspective on it and... Uh, he was talking about I, film festivals was his example. Yeah. Of, 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 of film festivals that are all about the optics and um, the uh, which w would be the 
Uh, I forgot the examples he uses. And since that's not my world, I don't want to speak Toronto on behalf of them. Toronto Film Festival and Well, Cannes. he said the Toronto, Cannes. no, he said the Toronto Film Fe- Festival was the integrative of these other two, which mm-hmm. was Con, Can, Can, Con? Can, yeah. Can, right? Can is right. And um, Sundance, maybe? Or? Mm, it wasn't Sundance. Uh, I, f- I forget. It's another one. Um, Tribeca. It might have been Tribeca. Yeah, I think it was. It, you know, and, yeah. and they, they wanted, Toronto Film Festival wanted to uh, it, integrate both of them. Um, and and thought long and hard about this process. So I thought that was a standout too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought the part that I brought up as a standout about mm-hmm. you're not relying on um, the leader to lead. Everyone is trying to lead the team. And I've never really, I just, I don't know, I've never really heard of that before. You kind of delegate these bits to people and you do it and they come to you and say, I've done the job. What do you think of the job? And that's the leadership role versus everybody needs to lead their department on the team. Mm-hmm. Um that landed with me uh, just how it's to think kind of, about it's kind of landing with me too i mean it's like the Toyota at moments we defer to thing. each other i mean if it's a grammar thing like our copywriter brian i'm going to be like i'll defer to him if it's a certain thing i defer to michael they'll mm-hmm. defer to me on certain things but there may be um you know michael's been playing the role of product man uh project manager but that's a sort of leadership position in a way that's um sort of facilitating the professionals that are on a marketing team, like the one I'm describing. So it's, but that product manager is going to have to defer to each individual at different times too. So there's leadership in different dimensions. Yeah. It's even today uh, to bring it to engineering for a second. I mean, we, we, I mixed the song. It was a duet with two artists. Then they wanted to hear a version with only the female artist on it. Um, so we did that version and then today, <clears throat> a week later, after those two versions were approved, ready for mastering, they were like, oh, the artist isn't actually happy with her vocal performance. So here's another version of the entire thing. And it's missing like two bars of the second verse. It's missing a bridge. It's missing a bunch of stuff. And instead of Josh involving me in this, I see emails going out, like trying to handle this. Like, why does he need me to tell him how to talk to the producer about how to get the right files. Like he's taking his role and leading his way through this and I'm CC'd on it. And he's like, Hey, does this need to be done today? Because I could try to make this work, but he's just taking the leadership role. And why do I have to tell him what to do? And that was my version of it, of understanding within my team, within the ranks. Hmm. um, I want, I want Josh and Ingmar and anybody that's working with me to, lead their own position have a domain yeah have their own domain and i hmm. so i don't know i guess i had never heard it articulated quite like that that's what someone that is brought in to cor- corporations to analyze and systematize teamwork is looking for in a team um hmm. so that that had landed mm-hmm. uh, those were the two bits. I, I thought what yeah. Michael was talking about, the integrative thinking was just, just, I mean, that's like Spider said, that's that's innovation. Like I'm I'm sitting here and we're, we talk weekly about why do you compress? You know, not I have to compress. Like I'm trying to upend why we do any move that we are supposed to quote unquote do in what we do. And, and you could do this in any field. I don't know about hair cutting. Uh, maybe yeah. in haircut, there's like a way, you know, a place to start. Um, I mean, there has to be. There's gotta be, yeah. right? That's yeah. a little different. Um, but I want to try to upend and, and having people give you a better vocabulary than you already have of the possibilities of how to go about the first principles thinking. And, and I think it, it helps having these models. And, and Michael always talks about mental models, and I'm, I'm not one for um, knowing them, being aware of them, um, visualizing them, practicing Categori- them, yeah, categorizing. The that's that's yeah. not my skill. Um, and hearing people like uh, Randall discuss this uh, emboldens things that Michael has brought up to me as well, and 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 so I, that's what I got. Mm. I'm I'm a very adverse to his his language in a lot of ways and his voice. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also mm-hmm. very pro Canada. I'm also very pro Canada, but he was to the point where it was <laughs> just getting a little obnoxious. Yeah. It was like we do everything better, basically, and I just don't know that they do. You know, I love Canada, uh, so let's just to all our <laughs> listeners out there, I love it's beautiful. There's a lot of great music. There's a lot of great, a lot of things. We love have, you. We have significant downloads in Canada. Yeah. When you, when you look at the Libsyn, like I love world, that. world map. All I'm saying is like, wow, it's kind of interesting. I so also feel this way about really the proud to be Americans Canada. too. I'm like, y'all are a little bit nuts, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I like, no, just no, chill no. out. These are 
big generalizations. I know. I don't know what to do with them. I, I don't know what no, to do. I, I think it's probably to do with Shane being Canadian as well. So they agree when, he, when yeah. he gets a Canadian on the show, it's it's like it's they're, having, it. they're having a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know, but, Rory. Does do you do you does that color your impression at all? I mean, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try you, it again okay. because, but. But honestly, probably not. But do I you, think you have to. But no, I mean, no, you can I, appreciate everything that all, was all, said. All I mean, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I think it 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 reminds me of something that we sort of explored a few weeks ago, which is my relationship to language and ideas and words, and um, sort of how that's being redefined by this work. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm I'm being more conscious of what I say, um, and I'm being I'm trying to be a better listener and learn from you guys in a more constructive way and I'm sort of being held to account because there's an audience listening so I can't just be a belligerent asshole it's like I have to I have to like usual yeah exactly like <laughs> like I am in my private life um, <laughs> but um I it's interesting to me that when when ideas don't land emotionally for me when they don't when I don't feel them uh, so the, the contrast that you were painting was between this guy Randall and Seth Godin, for whom every, mm -hmm. every utterance, when Seth says, I'm going to have the, the, you know, macchiato and a slice of that carrot cake, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, go, Seth. It's nobody, so direct. Nobody fucking <laughs> orders cake like you, right? He's just, there's nothing that man, it's so potent, right? Mm. Um, it's so enjoyable. So, and, and consequently, I found myself internalizing, sharing, teaching, the stuff that I've learned from him effortlessly. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of people for whom I've given a Seth Godin nugget and watched it made a difference mm -hmm. in their in their day is pretty amazing. Yeah, you know? watch, watching all these interviews about the new book, mm -hmm. um, The Practice, I see us, like the future us in the things that he says next. I hope so. You see what I mean? Yeah, it's I hope so. Like I, I learned about Seth Godin 20 years ago mm -hmm. um, from a friend of mine um, who was in finance at um, um, C-suite levels. And he was a big fan of Seth Godin and whatever books were around at the time, The yeah. Purple Cow and like something, you know. Um, and... Permission well, marketing, the early ones. Yeah. yeah. And, and so... You know, I've never read a whole book in my life. I don't know that I've ever said that, like, out loud to people. Um, but uh, dyslexia makes it hard to read that much stuff mm -hmm. uh, in a row, sort of. Uh, so, but what I did is glean from those books these these ideas, and they're so it's oh so easy to go into his work and, and pull these ideas out. I would just sort of open it whenever and mm -hmm. just, you know, just let it take it where it where it took me. And then I just have Seth Godin in the back of my mind for a while. You know, I hear a couple episodes of Akimbo a few years ago. He's just sort of there in the background. And then to catch up with him now and for these ideas to be developed and sharpened and and to have the influence of you who's influenced by Seth uh, Rory who's influ influenced by Seth and I know other people in that I'm taking influence from are influenced by him and to just sort of see the parallels in the mm -hmm. development of the thinking you know like in in just so many dimensions it's like I feel like this book and this work and these interviews that he's doing now are like work we don't have to do. Yes. You see what I mean? It's yeah. like, I feel like mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to do the same work. We're trying to make sense of the world, how to act, how to think about things, how to work together. Um, and we are applying it, we're funneling it and we're applying it to a, you know, a specific occupation. Uh, while Seth is doing something that's sort of general, you know, it's most easily applied to writers, uh, I think, because that's what he does. His practice is writing a blog every day, um, uh, every weekday um, for 20 fucking years or whatever. Yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, but I, I, you know, I find some kindred spirit and some deep validation and some, it's like... Uh, 
uh, I just feel profoundly inspired by, you know, my thoughts, your thoughts, the stuff we've worked out sort of reflecting back at me when he talks. Yeah. And, and I think it is most exemplified in this book and in this point that he's making right now. I yeah, know. I agree 100%. It's really powerful yeah. to me yeah. emotionally, you know. Yeah. What I love about it is, is just how accessible it is. The amount of people I've pointed at the at the Akimbo podcast and just said, just start at number one, season one. And if you don't like an episode, just skip. They're like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. They're, if you're not feeling one, just skip to the next one. And just like the amount of responses of people are like, holy shit, episode seven, episode two, episode four, episode nine, whatever. It just lands for them. And simple stuff that they've been struggling with, he just has such clarity. He sort of cuts through so many layers of something that we talked about the other day uh, um, in relation to a client, just this, this sort of uh, catch-22 construction, this this web of, of uh, if I go left, this will happen. If I go right, this will happen. If I go up, this will happen. So I can't go, you know, and you, you, people end up stuck in their lives, in their work, in their relationships, in their, in their growth and development. And uh, he has such an amazing, simple way of cutting through a lot of that sort of construction mm. um, with, and not in a destructive, not in a disparaging or, or sort of cr critical way. He, he always manages to sort of break down what you were believing in and leave you more excited about moving forward than when you had those constraints, you know, mm. uh, which is really a really powerful way to, way to teach and, and motivate, you know. Um, so yeah, I think you could say we're a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to get the book. It still yeah. hasn't arrived. I started reading it's it this there. afternoon. Mm -hmm. I tried to live what we talked about, Rory. We tried. To, we talked about how it would be really ideal if on Wednesday, when we're doing this podcast, we didn't really have to work on anything else so yeah. we can prepare for the podcast as if it's work. Mm -hmm. um, and today was a pretty light day for me. Josh had to get some work done, so I got a massage. I walked. I rode my bike. I listened to two podcasts, and then I started reading uh, the practice right before just to have um, some Seth Godin influence uh, t tonight, even mm -hmm. just kind of um, uh, fresh. And the, every th every line landed. Like yeah. every line was like, "Yeah, this is this is actually what I think I've been doing the whole time." Because I think my my version of of the creative process um, for myself has just kind of worked itself out over the course of wow, twenty something years since dabbling in in music. Um, but I never thought I, I tried to bring this up before we went back to the Randall guy. But the 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 talent um, and skill difference, yeah. uh, the distinction there is so um, palpable to me. I never really thought I was talented. I just worked really hard at things. So, you know, your your parents and friends and people are like, oh, you're so talented. You're good at stuff. And it's like I don't know. Hmm. I was like a pretty good saxophone player when I went to college for it. But I practiced every day all day and I still wasn't great, you yeah. know? Do you want to restate the, the talent skill thing for, for people listening? Just a, a, a quick summary of, of Seth's sort of take on that. Um, I wonder if any of you can do it better because yeah. I, I, I only read it briefly and I just, it really resonated with yeah. me and I have personal experience, but. I haven't read the part of the book, but hearing him talk about it, his point is that Seth was saying that the, it is offensive to the skilled people who've worked really hard mm. to refer to what they have as talent mm. because talent is, talent is sort of a, a predilection. It's like, a, you know, real talent is super rare. Yeah. Like the and, and I looked up the, the definition. Can, is It's a natural aptitude of a skill, right? Like it's not, skill is in there, but it's a natural aptitude. Yeah. And it's, it's, the, it, it's very rare. It's, it's a natural inclination toward a thing, but then you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. Then you have to show up to develop it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just something you have um, as, you know, in its skilled, fleshed out form. Yeah. Um, it just means you're sort of like a little bit of a head start or mm -hmm. practice one day of practice for you is like five days of practice for someone else or, you know, I don't know yeah. what, it, what it looks like. Um, yeah, I... I, I thought of an example um i don't my, my one of my favorite movies is a is a pixar film called ratatouille um and love it and in there uh gusto the 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 deceased um french chef 
says, uh, and his, the name of his cookbook is Anyone Can Cook. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've heard people say the opposite. I've heard people say that about mixing, like not everybody could be a mix engineer. It's like, well, I was thinking about the chef analogy and maybe not every 35 to 45 year old amateur chef that can impress their um, their dinner party guests with a delicious meal can run a restaurant um, because they have no experience in the industry. But you can get really good at cooking to that degree. And then then you can maybe, you know, you can argue that you can join a team and the team can support the chef's vision. And maybe at 40, you can open up a restaurant. And yeah, you maybe could do this. I'm not talking about my own aspirations just for anybody that's curious. <laughs> I have no interest in opening up a restaurant. But anybody can do anything to a degree, right? I, I almost hate that statement because like, you can be anything when you grow up. Well, it's not really true. There's a lot of circumstances that um, will tell you otherwise. Uh, based on a lot of bacterial factors um, and upbringing factors, but you theoretically could do anything. And if you work hard enough, if you want to be a record producer, you could be a record producer and you can practice. You can go every day and do it all over again. And his, um, his analogy was um, teaching how to juggle, right? Mm. And, and the, the, uh, the practice is the throw, right? Not the catch. The catch will happen when the throw is done right. Mm-hmm. And the, the first thing you do to learn how to juggle is you throw and you let it drop. And you understand the emotional response of the body to the failure of it falling to the ground, right? Like that's the first thing that you get so frustrated when the ball falls. But 20 times, right hand, throw to the left, let it drop. Don't even try to catch it. Left hand to the right, let it drop. And just feel the body's failure and its, it's uh, awareness of the failure. And then at some point, you one ball and you catch it. And you do it 20 times and you catch it. Then you go left hand to the right hand, you catch it. And you have two balls and you go throw two, drop two. And you just go up the practice, right? And it's just at some point, you integrate the third ball and you're just rolling with it and you're throwing and you're catching. And just there is this, there is a practice to almost anything. And it sounds just like hinge. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with that. Is that a mic drop? A lot of drop balls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of drop balls in life. That's what um, I'm saying. I, it's yeah. it's a kind of like metaphor. Yeah. I think the yeah. the one interesting aspect of the sort of skill talent dichotomy that he talks about um, is it's less, you know, nobody's crying for the successful people who are mischaracterized as like oh. You know, we said he was talented when really he was skilled because he'd worked hard. Right. No, yeah. Nobody gives nobody a fuck, right? Yeah. Um, what, what's important where it lands is that this message of, of sort of this obsession with talent, God-given or otherwise talent, Self-made. Um, disempowers people who don't have a natural aptitude for something, but who could work to be great at it. Yeah. So that's, that's where the rubber meets the road with the whole concept is, you know, if you believe that you know, Tiger Woods has a talent, a raw talent that you could never match. If you truly believe that, then you'll give up when learning how to golf gets hard or learning how to play guitar or learning how to graphic design or be an architect or whatever, a surgeon. Um, If you believe that other people have... Now, as it happens, I actually do believe because I've seen it. I've seen people who have incredible aptitude for things. Um, But that's just a fact of life. Like, it's just some people have it and it's you can accept it and then you just get on with life, which is I'm going to try and be the good at the stuff that I'm interested in. You, you, know? you got to frame it in terms of the excuses people make too. Yes. That's yeah. that's really what Seth is getting at. He, he also gets at this um, authenticity thing and he is not big on authenticity. He's big on consistency. Yes. He's big on showing up, right? Uh-huh. It, it, you know, his... You know, this ties into the writer's block thing where people's, you know, they're uncomfortable when, when, you know, so when Seth says, just write every day and eventually, you know, something will be good, right? You'll write a lot of bad shit and you need to be comfortable with that. And then eventually by accident, something good's going to come out. Uh, And so this, this notion that People are uncomfortable when they write or when they play just to write, 
just because it's Monday morning or whatever, that it feels inauthentic to them, right? He's like, I don't care if it's authentic. What authentic is, is a fucking two-year-old who has no filter. Yeah. I don't want to know any of you people in your authentic <laughs> amygdala way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I expect you guys to, like, mitigate and to, and to control, you know, your authentic self. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, you I, know, it, the, the, it's, it's easy to go at these, con at these concepts um, and forget that the framing has to do with the excuses people give themselves not to show up every day. And that's sort yep. of like what the book seems to be going through. It's yeah. like all these different ways that people, you know, I mean, don't, don't show up. Yeah, it's day. called the practice and you have to practice and practice implies repetition. Um, I, 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 I feel it and see it and read it as being extremely freeing to not have to think that I have to be talented to do something. That if you throw enough you know, good sources of fat and acid and a hot stove top, like I could, pro and some salt, like I could probably make things taste good at some point. Like I overcooked the salmon today. It was disgusting salmon, but the steak was really good. You know, no, no, for real. Like to me, I didn't, like I would never, if that was ordered at a restaurant, I would send that shit back. Like I sucked, but I, but I know I'm going to do it better the next time. Like I'm going to give up on cooking salmon. It's just dumb <laughs> shit, but it, I'm not talented at cooking. I am practicing and I am skilled at it. I am not a talented mix engineer. Like I just can't say, I couldn't, when I was reading these words, like I, this is me, like this person is talking, is speaking to me. And granted, I hope, and I'm aware he's probably speaking to 10 other million people too. Hopefully he sells a bunch of these books, but that's me. I practiced. I was locked in a room for so many years, just trying to be good at something that I had a feeling I could be good at. You know, that's all it was. It was a feeling that this was something I liked and people recognized that it was better than their brother was doing it or something <laughs> <laughs> better than their dad, you know. Um, but it still didn't, like, it didn't sound like, you know, Tony was making record sound. I just kept practicing. Um, so that one hit home with me. Uh, uh, granted, I haven't read much more than that. I've only done about 30 pages of the book. And that was, um, that was just very, you know. Um, I would really love to potent. be able to expl explain Seth's ideas as well as he does. He just speaks for himself better than anyone. I think we're hoping to explain our ideas. That's as, about to just uh, say you that. Know, yeah. as, uh, as, you know, whatever whatever new stuff we're uncovering, however slowly. I mean, the, you know, this podcast is is our practice. It's us showing up and figuring stuff out in real time. Um, you know, like John said, listening back to episode 14, even when I listen to episodes from a week or two ago, I've all, my thinking has already moved on. Yep. And the, the analogy I used with you guys, I don't know if I used it on mic, was that sort of once you have the new software update, the, you know, you, you can't remember what it felt like to have yeah. previous ideas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just, just simply my relationship to words, language, my understanding of how I use language, what I'm trying to do with it, where I'm headed with it, is so different now than it was when we started episode one. So yeah. different. Um, so, you know, I think it's a, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll have our own thing to offer in time. And, and our place is to connect it to people in our, hopefully in our sphere, you know, in, in the music, to find ways that it connects and lands emotionally so that people can, can learn stuff that's useful. You know, we're, we're out there gathering, learning from smart people, uh, picking up good ideas from uh, bright people and talented people in the room and uh, hopefully making them usable. Or skilled yeah. people. Skilled people. Yeah, skilled. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, also, no. and, and, and also from people that might not be as, um, um, as listened to in, in our, um, in our yeah. sphere. Well, that's, right? that's huge. I mean, a, a lot of the most important things I've learned, I didn't learn from the most famous people I've worked with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, or the most successful. You learn stuff where you learn it, you yeah. know, and, and you try and make it useful going forward, you know. Um, Michael, I was searching for the text that you sent today when I, when I asked you, you know, I said, mm -hmm. hey, you're, you've been on the road, you've been going through, you know, your travels, and, and I'm sure there's a bunch you want to talk about, and you listed a bunch, and then I can't find the text. So I would love to hear it's from you the, on uh, 
Combos com- plus Dylan chat. I, I can't yeah, there was the whole bunch. there was four hundred texts in the past two but I, days. <laughs> I did I did upgrade my phone today, so I'm probably missing part of the mm. conversation. I'm probably missing yes. a chunk. Um, but is there any other? I know there was a bunch of cool stuff in what you said. Is there any anything else you wanted to to talk about tonight? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, one thing that's been in my head since we were talking about the last topic was this quote I heard, and it might have even been from that Knowledge Project episode, but it might not have been. I know I heard it recently, and it's just been in my head, and I really liked it, which is this idea that one of the problems with people is that we think that the version of us now is going to be making the decisions (laughs) in the future, like is going to be the one in the future making that decision. Like this version will be making future decisions. So we're projecting into the future. It's like, this version of us instead of the new version of us. Um, and I, I don't know. I heard that quote. I really liked it. Or what could it be idea. otherwise? What what yeah. what does that mean? I'm sorry. Well, a lot of times we think like, for example, like if you think, oh, I'll never get good at mixing because you're thinking that you now is going to be the same version of you in Oh, five okay. months, 10 months, you know what I mean? Without realizing that there is practice and through practice, you're going to continually grow. Like yes. it's harder to see something th- that obviously you've never seen, but you, you haven't seen that version of yourself. So there's, you know, mm-hmm. it's unknown. You, the only version of yourself, you know, is now and, and in the past. How does it affect what you should do today? Um, well, I think it's it's putting aside the idea that you you will be the same and that through practice that is what's going to help you grow and that you will be different in the future it's kind of holding on to that um which is no matter what you do you'll be somewhat different in the future but with practice like you won't actually be your same self as you are right now uh, which i think is sort of a thought trap that you could easily get stuck in um without really kind of stepping back and realizing like how much growth is possible through practice. This is maybe part of the labeling thing. If you label yourself as anything, mm-hmm. you're that's the you now. And there may be maybe truth in it in the moment, but in five years you may still be carrying that narrative or that label mm-hmm. and it's like not it's not really the way things are anymore. Yes. You see what I mean? Oh, very much, yeah. And yeah. and it could be in terms of capability too, you know, like what you're capable of. You could have sort of limits um, baked into your narrative that are, you know, they're artificial. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? That's and, what comes to mind here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. this kind of... Um, you're not aiming for gigs because you don't think you're qualified to work with that level of an artist or whatever. It's also emotional yeah. attachment yeah. to identity. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's... it's um, you know, you're carrying that identity forward and you're depending on it um, for your sense of, you know, well-being, calm, whatever. Um, and if it's that sense of identity is challenged, then all of a sudden there's this emotional penalty. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we could maybe do without all that, <laughs> mm. you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Naval's practice of 60 days of an hour of nothing right? It's supposed to reset all the things and you've sat there working through all the things. There's nothing to work through anymore, the concept. Um, I would wonder if we can rewrite our narratives every 60 days and how that would benefit us. Like all the stories we know about ourselves, just try another one. It's like watching Chef's Table with um, Alinea Chef Grant um, Ashatz. Is that how you pronounce his last mm, name? I don't know. Um, yeah, his, you know, he gets his third Michelin star and he's like, well, I don't want to do that menu anymore. You know, I'm going to just start again. I'm not going to just make a new menu. I'm going to close my, you know, award-winning, high-income-generating uh, restaurant for three months, and I'm going to make a new kitchen, like get different machines and just different processes and start over again. Um, it's like, oh, that's actually really interesting. Like, you just reformat your entire creative life and just um, make new stuff. Like a mandala. It's the, uh, the, um, the mandala. Remember mandala. that's... That- I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was uh, Louis C.K., Chris Rock, um, mm. Seinfeld, Ricky and, Gervais. and Ricky Gervais. Yes. And they're, you know, it's like a round table on, on mm. comedy. And sort of just, you know, uh, Seinfeld's take was you iterate, 
incredibly slowly. You bring in, you write new material, you choose the best of it, and you sort of introduce it slowly. So yeah. his set is is substantially the same over a five year period, and he's cycling out material that isn't working and cycling in the best of his new stuff very slowly. Um, and Louis is like, you write an hour you, or an hour and a half, you do it, yeah. you trash it, it's you the do next it again. Generation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's an amazing, amazing difference. And there's merit in both. Uh, totally, for sure. absolutely. Yeah, but absolutely. you can't do the slow burn anymore. Um, that that era is over mm. because of the internet. Fair, the atten- just attention spans in general. I suppose, yeah, like Jay Leno still has all the same material. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. you can't do that anymore. No, no. Well, I mean, Seinfeld crushes live pre-COVID. Um, he does, you know, a hundred and something dates a year and crushes with the same material because right. there are people who, and it, it goes to the question that we were. So for the for the listeners, we've. This is an aside. Sorry, Michael, we've gotten a long way from your original point, but for we sort of have a conception of our episode show notes being questions rather than just sort of a run through a bullet point list of what we spoke about, you know, um, a particular chef's table episode. We will reference stuff, but the idea is that we'll we'll sort of, our disposition is towards good questions. Yeah. Um, and Spider and I, um, every week now, get together, listen to the episodes and draw the questions from the episodes and and we're figuring out what makes a good question. Um, mm. And uh, sorry, there was a point. You can ask a good question. No, they're open questions. We're harvesting the open yeah. questions from the conversation, which is part of the work of this conversation. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. are like the lines of inquiry that we're interested oh, in. Sorry. Yeah, the point was that one of the questions was about, um, and it was, and Spider was right. You know, I. We each take an episode and we listen and we harvest questions and thoughts and ideas. And some of them are very um, sort of new and raw and, and mm. ill-formed and they're not, they don't work. They're just like, a we're, we're just grabbing a, a concept, something nebulous, and we're trying to put it on paper. And the other person is kind of wrestling with it. It's like, oh, I don't know, not yet. So we've got a, a place where we put these. Mm. But one of my questions this week was, you know, are your clients coming to you for consistent, repeatable results, mm. or are they coming to you for something new each time? Right. So, you know, there are there are restaurants that are defined by the consistency of their menu they're offering. Luigi's deep yeah. dish pizza, you know, I'm 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 probably being racist. Yeah. I probably just got cancelled. <laughs> like there there's some no, you want the same sauce, the same you, cheese and same crust. And your time. dad told you that when he was 17, yeah, he yeah, went yeah. to that place. Yeah. And there are other places that if they're if the menu doesn't have some vegetable you've never heard of with some Japanese shiitake mushroom. Like, you're looking for innovation. Well, that's, in, yeah, and, I was going to say that. That's innovation. My point was that if if there's a misalignment, but my, the, the, the idea that I was trying to capture is if there's a misalignment between what your client expects and what you're delivering. But, but you what know, if you can consistently innovate? Well, that was, we had that, we went there. Um, mm. Of course, in your innovation, you want consistency, but that's a separate point. My 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 question was, do people know what to expect? Um, and mm-hmm. where the jumping off point here was, people who go to see Seinfeld are looking for that consistency. They're looking for that honed, refined mm-hmm. piece of theater. And people who go to watch Louis C.K., uh, or, or people like him, uh, a Chappelle, they're looking for a high wire act. They're yeah. looking yeah, for someone who's taking hearing, chances. Hearing the same joke, like, said 10 different ways, like, it's not that fun. Eating the same pizza 10 times over 10 years is not that fun. It is for some people. It's, it's, some people are drawn to uh, the consistency. I mean, I do think I, you're making a point about comedy that once, once you've heard the joke, it's, it's never new again. But yeah, you, have you been to see anyone in town and they do old shit? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it happen. It's, I've seen stuff that I've seen on YouTube, and yeah. No, I know. I know the. I know the problem. My point. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yes. I mean, I just hear comics all yeah. on podcasts talk about this all the time. Yeah. The the the, the you know we're getting into we're we're getting bogged down in a detail. The I point. So. The point of the so. yeah. the point of the story is that there are people who want consistency in. They want the same pizza year on year. They want the same breadsticks, whatever it is. And there are other people who are drawn. And, you know, and, and there, are, th- this has been well studied. There are, there, you know, people who... It's Starbucks. I mean, it's make it the same the world around, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, your brute force beans that are varied and a natural product into mm -hmm. having the same flavor. Flavor. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm waving <laughs> quote my unquote. Yeah, I'm air quoting here. <laughs> yeah, there's no flavor, flavor. profile. Um, so how do I mean? What? What? There's a Starbucks of mixers. Uh, a Starbucks of I think they're absolute, engineers. They're is that what you're is. sort of getting at? Yeah, there yeah. absolutely is. Yeah, and we, I mean, my, we talked my, about this. My point is mm -hmm. that you need to be if if you're one or the other, or you you conceive yourself that way, you need to be communicating that clearly. If you're if you're, you know, I know from talking to a particular label head. I've told you this story who was yeah, a label head in town who was contrasting two mastering engineers. He was like, one is a safe pair of hands. When I've got a record that I love, that the band are happy with, the producer is happy with, when I feel it's there, I give it to my safe pair of hands. The other guy is a wild card. One time in three, it's awesome. The other two times, it's a shit show. Uh, but when it's awesome, sometimes it can be just the fire I need to light under a particular record's ass to make it come alive. Mm. Yeah. Um, and he was very clear about what the offering was and why he would choose one over the other. And that's, as someone who's trying to put an offering into the marketplace or speaking to people who are, that's really interesting to me. You know, because I don't think a lot of people are clear on that. No, this is this is what, you know, when we when we talk, we have a handful of recording artists that we, that we talk to, and they are much clearer and more comfortable with this idea of there being a story about them and like, yeah sort of how people talk about them. That's, in a way, a big part of the job. Um, but audio engineers, they, they're, they, don't, they're, they don't think of themselves as performers, generally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and when we're in unfucked workshops with people trying to understand their situation, um, you know, we're always asking... Well, if you if you sort of uh, um, you dig what Spike does, you know you you, you sort of have uh, you know a similar approach. Why should someone hire you rather than Spike? Right? Mm -hmm. A question like that. Like, what is it about you? What story can I tell? Like, oh yeah, this dude grew up in you know the mountains in the Himalayas and, you know, any, anything that I can say. And he like, he, you know, he was obsessed with death metal. So everything he touches, you know, if you wanted to, you know, ha feel like a, ten a clenched muscle, mm -hmm. like you send it to this guy, any story that I can tell that's a, that makes this person memorable, you know, um, easily distinguish from someone else, give them unique character. Positions. Though. A position, yeah. a lane, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, a lane they can occupy, a way that that person can then tell someone else mm -hmm. why they made their decision, just like you're saying, safe yeah. pair of hands, da, da, da. It can be, safe pair of hands is a, is a that is a um, powerful metaphor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... Um, You know, engineers should be thinking about this. They should be thinking about the way other people are talking about them and trying to, one way or another, if it's through help with a, you know, from a consultant or from somebody who's in marketing or whatever, um, mm. thinking about the story of you, um, Having a bio was always like this thing you had to do as an mm -hmm. artist. Yeah. You know, I don't know like how any of that's working today, but in the 90s, like your bio was a big deal. And so like that's that's what I'm talking about. It's like how can people describe you, what you do to other people that's easily transfer from that person to the next so that you can take advantage of the network effect that is the social animal that is human beings. Uh, you want you want to spread across the network and if it takes too long or it's too vague or if it sounds like somebody else, then it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know, I think... Um, I'm sure Michael's got a lot to say about this sort of um, storytelling, you know, market marketing being storytelling. Uh, but I, I don't think it comes naturally to to everybody. 
especially engineers. I don't think it just it comes naturally. It, if if you do exceptional work, people will find a way to talk about you. Like it will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but you can help guide it and lead it. You can be a leader of that story. You can put <laughs> yourself out in the world. And that's what companies pay people like Michael to help them do, you know, is to put their story out into the world to have influence over what their brand means in the world. You yeah. Know, engineers do the same thing. I wanted to riff on that for a second. Like something that I see happening often with engineers, producers, like everyone behind the the desk um, or at the desk is like such an aversion to wanting to discover that and figure out that story uh, as if there's, um, it's inauthentic or it's like trickery or it's something um, negative when to your point, like it, it's really, it's actually the complete opposite. It, it's taking the lead and it's, it's being uh, the leader in your own life and um, understanding yourself better and helping the world understand you better. Um, but it is very interesting. And I don't know if you guys see this as well with clients, but this discomfort in um, that uh, generation of of storytelling, you know, like the generating that story and, and powering that machine, you know, like there's uh, oftentimes this either aversion or resistance or um, sort of confusion based on, you know, models of what they've seen in the past, you know, um, or thinking, well, every other engineer doesn't do this. Like why, you know, why is this necessary? You know, so I think, I think an important point, just to tag on that, an important thing to remember is that we're in a kind of famine in the music business. The the business isn't buoyant. It's not a buoyant space. There isn't a bunch of money floating around, you know, like, yeah, the numbers are up like three years in a row, up a little, in a sort of abstract way, just like the stock market is up. It's like, well, is that is that landing in real people's lives? Hmm. The music business is not, um, people are in a mindset, they're, they're, they're forged in a business where you say yes to everything. So the idea of, mm. of, of choosing a lane, saying no to some work, defining a sound and risking not being booked yeah, all the time. You're eliminating a lot of business. You're right? limiting in business. And yeah. that's not um, an easy route to choose or a strategy to, to deploy mm-hmm. when there isn't enough business. There isn't enough. I mean, mm. if, if engineers are getting paid three, 250, 300 bucks a day, to run sessions in decent sized studios, it's not, it's barely, it's barely viable. Mm-hmm. So the idea that they could say, well, I only do alt jazz or I only do, <laughs> you know, the, these, these kinds of scoring sessions, it's like, it feels absurd to them. So they're, they're forged in this space. So I think we need to be mindful that the people that, you know, some of the people that we would look up to came from a generation when the, it re, there really was a plentiful supply of work. Everyone who wanted to work could work. The idea of choosing a lane saying no was way easier than it is now. And I'm not saying, I can almost preempt what John is going to say. I'm not saying that it's impossible to say no, 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 but it's harder for people. There, there, there isn't, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of kids coming out of audio school. There's, um, there are a lot of pressures downward on price for work. And for most people, the idea that they could just turn stuff down to, to uh, you know, create an identity, to project an identity, to tell a story, it seems alien. Well, now, that, I still think it's the right strategy. I, but I, think there's, I think there's a whole layer below that where the resistance is. And mm-hmm. uh, while, I, while I think that's true and that the financial pressures are true, and I think, I think this is, um, yeah, I mean, my heart goes out. To, to people who feel stuck. Um, uh, one, you can still take the work you need to take to pay your bills and refine your understanding of yourself so yes. that other people can know you better. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about aim. Again, we're talking about aim. We're not talking about overnight. And we're not even saying talking about mm-hmm. saying no to gigs. Yes. Um, uh, we're talking about 
broadcasting to the world, whether in person or digitally, um, signals that will attract the types of things that you want. So the things that you're enthusiastic about to share them with the world gives rise to opportunity for that to be reflected back at you, just like you talking about how into Paul's Boutique you are and Dennis Koziak talking to you about all the cool Beastie Boys things that you have to come see at the record plant, right? Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you are being enriched because you broadcasted enthusiasm to the world, right? Mm -hmm. And there's so many versions of that. Um, so the resistance, I think, is around defining oneself, taking a stand, and potentially alienating people. It's a sort of hedge, like a social hedge to just sort of be nebulous. Mm -hmm. And I think the real work is, you know, getting over that um, <laughs> subconscious sort of fear of loneliness and alienation <laughs> mm. that underlies that, right? Um, and strike out on your own path conceptually which then becomes as an aim then becomes an actual path yeah you see what i mean yeah i uh, yeah i believe all i think of that. that's where the the resistance mm -hmm. and awkwardness comes from mm -hmm. and we're all i mean look we're all we can ask anyone in an unfuck workshop well what do you want like where do you want to wake up in the world you know, what do you want? And it's not easy to answer. Every time we do those workshops, we're at pains to point out that these questions are very difficult for us personally. There's a reason I'm not on Instagram. There's a reason I don't post. It's because I don't, I haven't been clear about what to say. I look at 99.9% .9 of other engineer and mastering engineers posts and they're useless. They're useless to the world. They're, they're meaningless and they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, I don't find them to be useful or interesting or colorful or Same. anything. So I don't want to do that. Or they're actually uh, not even their own posts. It's somebody else's cover art. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. the one that kills me. Yeah. You go to an engineer's page and it's cover art of the stuff they worked on. Yeah. What do you think would happen? This is mostly directed at Michael. What would, like, what's the experiment of me just not posting anything work related or human related on, on social media for like a whole year. Do you think I'd get less work? Yeah. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I'm if thinking you, about all the factors. You There's a lot of factors from Instagram? there. Yeah. Would I get less work? I would say it's more possible that you would get less work. But I heard John's almost fully booked next year already. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of getting well, at. Given that John's yeah. taken a new career direction. Yes, we, we, yeah, we covered true, we true, covered true. that pretty pretty comprehensively, I think, last week. Yeah, but yeah, I think like it would be if we're talking next year versus three years from now or two years from now. Like, what does that mean? You know, like if you weren't on for two years or three years, yeah, I think that would definitely have a much clearer effect. Mm. Um, it's a it's a ballsy move for sure. I, I, um, but uh, my question is why? Why is it a ballsy move to hmm. simply do the work and not yeah. post about the work? But it's like not telling anyone. It, it's like, a imagine you go do the work and keep it a secret from us. It's a missed opportunity. It's like a version mm -hmm. of that. But the, but I but I wouldn't mm -hmm. keep it from you. No, no, yeah. I mean, it's it's just that's where people are and that's where people communicate. So it, in a sense you're saying you why wouldn't you want to share the work that you're doing? Well, okay. no, 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 no. The question is, will you suffer for it? Um, I'm, mm -hmm. well, can, we, can we flip the question? Yes, please. Can yes. we, can we t turn it like the inverse and say, what is possible on Instagram that people are not doing? I've been thinking a lot about this. I've been thinking a lot about what it is I want to do and say on Instagram. Mm. Um, and a lot of the difficulty is what Spider was talking about, which is the clarity around the kind of work I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. and the tension with, you know, kids to feed and bills to pay and, you know, the kind of work I have done and the kind of work I want to do and the sort of discomfort of owning what I, how I want to lean into that, that work, right? Um, but what could Instagram be? Like, imagine we could flip switches and pull levers in the morning. We were, we were you know, 
simulation gods, matrix gods, and we mm. could we could make Instagram be a powerful tool, a useful thing in the world. Um, not no, it's it's it is. it's it, it is. What do you mean? It it come on, it, it, it is. undeniably it's is. Incredible. But but, but I, I know what you're saying. But no, of mm. course it is. Okay, so dude, I turned a lonely dinner into a really great mm. night and i'm still mm. getting the benefits of it just by going live on instagram but that, that's what i'm talking, talking about that's that's strangers. a clear example of using instagram in a way that mm -hmm. i mean you know i don't want to i don't want to spend time dwelling on the negative aspects of instagram yes but if if you mm. were to categorize posts into reporting uh fronting um mm -hmm. you know um just clear demonstrations of insecurity like if you were to delete all of those posts and what you would be left with it would be you it can would be, Rory, unfollow of course you, yeah right. no yeah. of course i understand my yeah. my yeah. my mm -hmm. question is okay. how we're talking to people how do we what could it be yeah what your your live thing it's not an easy thing to do to post yeah. and say hey yeah no this is why i it made an effort weird. effort really to big weird. you up after it and say listen yeah. That was really important, and I'm assuming it's going to happen next week, right? Yep, yep. Um, that's Monday's what I. At seven. That's where. That's a reference point for me in terms of useful. Your question, I was just talking to my wife about it last night, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. But is it useful? Is it useful? That's super important. To I me. think it can be useful. I mean, it is useful. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Let's just harder, harder sentence. Instagram is highly useful. We know its utilities. We know what it can do. What it could be minus what you're saying uh, on it, I think is a better place. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, never going to happen because um, the huh. lowest common denominator is... We uh, can't do it? it? The four of us can't oh, 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 yeah, but I'm saying um, in, a, in a grandiose manner. Yeah, well, um, we're, we're not the same. Well, yeah, well, I was going on the yeah. thought experiment of we can pull levers. We are like, all, we, we, we magically are working at Instagram and we can affect change uh, um, worldwide. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was yeah. going on along that path. We can those, change those. the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought you were trying change to thought. the culture of the app. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. culture of the app. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I, I, I'm just... Well, you'd have to change the app. I'm wondering yeah. just specifically... Um, I like your question, Flip. I think that I have figured out ways with Michael in the beginning and then kind of continue um, continuing on on my own to make it um, work in my favor uh, for myself only. I hope it's uh, reaching people. I mean, today, like talking to Eduardo, um, yeah. uh, you know, it's like w wild that you can impact um, someone and in another country and you know how how real and connected it can be and that's fantastic um but i feel comfortable doing what i'm doing on it yet i still don't want to be on it right so i'm going to i'm speaking publicly right now it's something i feel very uncomfortable doing yet with the three of you it makes it a lot easier and and i think that i should take my role in the you know my young role in the industry seriously and and, and grow into a, a position um that I'd like to hold uh, a responsibility um, for maintaining and all the all the things, um, but Instagram seems mostly fake to me, mm -hmm. right? Even even when um, even when you are clearly being authentic, like in the, the Seth Godin, like don't I don't want your authenticity. Mm -hmm. Even when it still feels pl plotted to me when someone's mm -hmm. obviously authentic they chose to be authentic then mm -hmm. and it's a, still a curated version of authenticity right it's still what it's very randomly what spider's example what he did last night which i didn't i didn't see but i heard uh, mike mill and i talked about it uh, apparently it was really great that's different because that's someone catching you live you know in in the moment that's what i'm saying is like it's not about what it is it's what you do when you're there right right mm -hmm. but how often mm -hmm. can you do that and how many people are staying on that live because of the use of the platform and its purpose of getting you to not sink into something it's mm -hmm. getting you to move on to the next thing as mm -hmm. quick as possible mm -hmm. why is that the platform for what you're trying to do on the platform that's not really made to do to do that, that. yeah because those people 
that I want to talk to are already there. We've, yeah. We've it's talked. just where people are. It, like you when meet you're a people kid, where you go at. to school. Yeah. And so Instagram is like school. That's, like you show yeah. up there every day and that's where everybody mm -hmm. is. If you've got ideas, mm -hmm. if you've got something to say, you've got to meet people where they're at. You can't be in an ivory mm -hmm. tower someplace with your great Seth ideas. Seth Godin's on Instagram. Yeah. Well, you, right, of course. Well, yeah. um, okay. Another, another layer to what I'm trying to say is why do we all have to have something to say? Like Seth Godin is saying what I think a lot of the time, like let him say it. Mm -hmm. So then I'm just going to be a, a Seth Godin reposter or a Sam Harris <laughs> reposter. No, yeah. but I could see myself, like I could see that version sure. of my Instagram life being like, yo, this is tight. Check it out. Yeah. I learned something you, from it. Maybe you will. Aggregator. But haven't you seen yeah, the effect that you can have on people? You know, the, 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 the way you can inspire people and the people who, who look up to you and, and not in a, not in an empty sort of idle way, but in a, like that, that work excites me. I want to make records that sound like that or feel like that, mm. or I want to, I'm living wherever. And I think that someday I could live in a cool city, in a cool house, working on cool music with mm. cool people and start a podcast. Like that's important. Mm. Like it's important to put that into the world and, and aside from the fact that it's fun to do, there's, well, there's, well, there's, there's utility in sharing that. Um, I mean, if only the increase in opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I think about spending time online, developing um, connections and trust and sort of growing a network that ultimately enriches my experience um, over time. Yeah. And I think just the, you know, providing whatever it is for people, if they're inspired, um, entertained, they have a laugh, like whatever happens, it's... Um, Everything's good. Yeah, it's good. It's rolling. <laughs> There's a little click. There was a click. Yeah, might have came on, in over the on the feed uh, over yeah. the uh, internet. Um, uh, it's it's really the strategy is sort of put good into the world, put myself into the world, and um, in a targeted way that is meant to produce opportunities and inspiration and a better world for me to live in. You know, so it's just, a, it's just what I would, it's what I do with people in the neighborhood, you know, all the people in the neighborhood, I'm a vibe to, you know, I'm trying to make this place nice yeah. place to live, you know? So you walk into the, the little, the little grocery market here and, you know, yeah, we are in a habit of smiling and sharing a laugh. You know what I mean? Like whatever. It yeah. Could be. A good time you to grow I mean? today. Yeah. Michael, what do you, yeah. I feel like we're starting to get there, but we're very much tethered. I feel like hot air balloons that are, that are, mm -hmm. the rope is still pretty, pretty short. What could it be? What could this, you know, what, what could we do online that would be, that would be more useful, more connected, more exciting, more fun, more, more important? Well, something that I would wish my kids were doing rather than, Mm. actively working against them mm. getting on Instagram, which is what I will be doing when, they, when they're 13 <laughs> yeah, or 14. Yeah. Like, no, no, you're not getting a phone. You're not doing that. So mm -hmm. imagine it's a, that I'm working and doing something that I could say, yeah, I think for your, whatever, you should do this too. You should consider this mm -hmm. move. What is that? I think it's an incredibly subjective question uh, or an answer to the question because what is good for you to do and then what is good to spider's point for the community that you're doing so for example like i love doing these stories because it feels like i'm in a graphic design program and i'm just having fun with it and throwing type and seeing what i can do with arrangements and sequence and things like that so for me it feels good and then for others like how can i connect can I set up a live for my birthday since it's COVID? I'm not going to be around people. Oh, that seems like fun. I mentioned it to someone in a DM. Now it's a thing. Mm -hmm. So like that's for the community. Now I can connect with people in LA or New York or all over. So 
But it was also fun for me. And then I made a little poster with a baby photo today. And like, just like being witty and sarcastic and humorous, like there's, there's, there's a utility for me to be me and expressive and creative. And then there's also a benefit to the community, um, whether it's being thought provoking or like Spider said, entertaining, making someone laugh. I think like all of the same, like if we remove Instagram from the conversation and just say like you show up to a group of people, there's like 30 people, you're at school or you're at uh, an event where there's no event. It's just a bunch of people standing there. Um, <laughs> like what could you do? How would you show up there? And I think like, doing that and then using the, because we're talking about Instagram here, using the tools that they have to be more you, uh, be more or express yourself via uh, the platform and using those tools is what I would recommend. I mean, I don't think there's any magical uh, equation to it as much as like, you know, I don't want to say be authentic, but it's like, do what you enjoy and that is beneficial in some way to the people that are connected to you that are interested in the things that you are. Um, I think, I think your, yeah. your feed is probably the most authentic feed that I come across every day. Just the sort of nice. the way that you Thanks. jump between <laughs> technical stuff and hard stuff and uh, discarded dildo boxes um, <laughs> in, in, on your, on your nature walk. Um, <laughs> Stuff with your family, your dad, and then like yeah. to to hardcore design concepts. Um, it's very authentic, and I wonder: is your fluency with the tools and the platform is that necessary? Like, is that a key driver of that? Do you think? Mm. Um, yeah, because it, it sort of becomes transparent. I feel like your feed is like a very is you. It's very much authentically you. Whereas most of the feeds that I'm talking about, of people that I really mm -hmm. like in person, mm -hmm. their feeds are not yes. that. Um, yes. A hundred percent. So, so I, yeah. you nailed it. I mean, I think there is a fluency to all platforms. I actually, as part of status, I do Instagram training specifically for that reason to show people like, here's how you do things in stories. Here's how you can create a colored background and add things. And here's the different tools you have and whatever, because once you figure that out, um, it's super empowering. And then it really starts to become fun. Um, and when fun gets introduced, then you can start posting dildo boxes that you see, <laughs> if that's what you see. And you're like, wow, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> this is the last thing I thought I would see on this beautiful walk, you know, like, um, and it's not a struggle to figure out how do I even do that? Like, I don't even know how to add a photo or add text. Like, I mean, there's some people, I'm sure there are engineers that have no idea how to even do that. Yeah, so. imagine if there was one of those at the table. Can you imagine if someone had like never <laughs> used it and never posted it at all? Can you imagine how bad that would be? Well, more than happy to help <laughs> I, you out I, with that. I love um, that the dildo box became a recurring character, yeah. you know, sort of like a season. <laughs> that was still here. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, man. But, when I was responding to people and just zooming in. <laughs> I, I guess what? what I'm pushing back again, sorry, no, just to, to, to close mm. the point or, you know, from my end at least, mm. is the sort of like the idea that it's, it is somehow already formed. It is what it is. Um, and I feel like when I think about how annoyed I am at the tenor of the, the dialogue in the audio space, it's like, well, let's fucking do something about mm -hmm. it. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we are. Um, yeah. And I sort of feel that way about Instagram. It's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not sort of interested in the idea that it's like, well, that's the thing. It's kind of the rat race of, you know, posting and mm -hmm. flexing and, well, you know, you just kind of get in the mm. water and do the thing. But you don't have to do metaphors. those things. Exactly, you that's don't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's, I, that's the spirit I'm trying to... But there's two, there's two ways. So, Rory, you, you know, we said before, to change the culture of the app, we have to change the app. And I think that's true. I mean, I think... It's the design of the app has a lot to do with the incentives and how people behave within them, right? It's just rules of the game. Yeah. And then there are people who play the game. You change the rules, people, you know, you know, respond differently. Uh, but 
thinking about it more, you change the culture of the app by affecting the culture, right, in real life. Um, by getting people to think differently, by, you know, so, uh, you know, on our Instagram, on the Conversations Instagram, you know, you see the starts of little conversations break out, right? Mm -hmm. Thoughtful insights, somebody elaborating on it. Like, it's not dumb shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not the worst of Instagram, mm -hmm. right? And it's because ideas are spreading and people are um, stimulated um, by certain ideas. And, you know... Um, these ideas pass between people and they're refined in the process. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, I think changing the culture of what it's like to be on Instagram is both. I mean, the app will continue to be up updated and we don't have the levers. So that is what it is mm -hmm. for, you know, for the time being. Um, I don't know how viable an alternative platform is. <laughs> you know, to do something independently that plays a similar role. I mean, maybe that's a discussion um, about some kind of new social network, who knows. But um, the it's the culture, the concepts, the ideas, the, the, the approach, the philosophy, the values, um, that when people come together around them, the culture of these apps change. You know, they're... Mm -hmm. There must be, you know, the culture within the general aviation Facebook group, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, pilots and whatever they're doing is going to be different to the culture of some other private Facebook group um, mm -hmm. who's into something else. You know, so I, I think it's it's really um, not as hopeless as not having the levers to d redesign Instagram and to, to benefit us more. Yeah, I it's hope so. It's actually less... less Hopeless than that. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I, that's mm -hmm. what I want. That's that's kind of what I'm trying to... Yeah. And uh, we see this cultural yeah. shift happening, this cultural wave happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the, the picture right now is pretty bleak because you mentioned uh, the phrase, the game, like playing the game. I think a lot of people signed up for Instagram thoughtlessly, like, oh, this is the new platform. I'm going to be on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I made my handle thoughtlessly, like, uh, you know... Maybe they weren't mixing at the time. Maybe they were into football and they wrote like Mike football one, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, all right, that's my handle now. And like, all right, let me just like put a bio up and like, oh, I guess I need a website. You know, it's, they kind of just did it because the things were there, but it wasn't thought through. Like if you were to show up on a football field and you were like, hey, you're playing a football game right now, like this is about to happen. <laughs> like you, you probably would want to be prepared in some degrees. And I think a lot of people are on the field that is Instagram, that is a really powerful platform mm -hmm. to connect, but they don't have the tools to play the game. They don't really know the rules about the algorithm. They don't know how that stuff works. They don't know, you know, and, you know, the importance of following and ratios and all the nonsense that the algorithm <laughs> puts, uh, you know, kind of, um, that the layer of difficulty that the algorithm puts uh, in front of you, but that is the game. And so I think when people, when I've seen clients of mine really embrace the fact that this is, there is a game gamification to this in, in some ways without, you know, there's gaming the system and then there's playing the game in a way that shows you and does, I'm just going to use the word authentic. Sorry, Seth. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're on a first name basis now. <laughs> um, you know, that is authentic. It isn't like, I'm just going to try to game it to get like a million likes and like, I'll feel happy and go to sleep. Like, um, but really like, so that my post can get out there, I could see more people, you know, they will interact. I can understand, you know, if I put a poll up and I'm really do have a question about something, I can get answers to that. I can engage with people about their answers privately or publicly. And there's so much that can be done. There's so much value there. I mean, I think there's probably some malicious people at Instagram or have more, you know, corporate uh, intentions. And there's others that are just like, how can we make a community that has the tools to thrive? Um, and I want to give credit to both of them because there are a ton of tools that 
if you know how to use them and if you you know and you see how your community interacts with them you'll see quickly how valuable it is but i think the biggest problem i'm seeing is just people are on the field of a game that's in motion and they just don't even know how to play. I don't even know if they knew how they got there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't even, well, you know, it's, it's like, when did well, I sign the, up? The only so. pushback I can give there is the referring to the algorithm and it's nonsense and just using the word nonsense. Like yeah. it's the algorithm is the thing. It's not nonsense. I knew when I said that you, you would know, say cause that. it's, yeah. that's why I said <laughs> yeah. the layers of complication that it has, because yeah. that's what I really meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my shorthand for that. Yeah. Um, Be it's 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 there to filter content because there's so much of it. But the other layer um, is that yeah. humans aren't evolved to interact with more than 150 people. So we have mm -hmm. now the uh, capability right. of interacting with billions of people. The Dunbar number, mm. is that what they call it? Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And um, like that's still the case with chimpanzees, right? Once you get to 151, they kill they one of them. Yeah, and they split. <laughs> or they, they split. No, they, they kill or split, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times I've, mm. I've heard that it's kill. Um, yeah. Sorry, uh, dis yeah. disappearance of their character. Is, is that a reference <laughs> to Call of Duty? Kill, kill means hey, but, but, but That's why death. chimpanzee Instagram I guess my, Instagram my, failed. My, my resistance just listening to, <laughs> to listening to all of this because it all makes sense and, I, I, um, and I'm glad that we're talking about this because I think about this pretty, pretty daily. Um, my resistance is Rory brought up, well, isn't, you know, you're impacting people. People are, you know, commenting and messaging you that you're making um, making it maybe possible for them to believe that they could even be doing what, uh -huh. you know, and what, what I'm doing. And I think that's that's great. But I don't I don't feel as a human that I am capable of connecting with all of these people as much as they deserve to be connected with. So I retract to I don't want to I don't think I can connect with almost any of them. Um, and I only kind of can connect with in, on Instagram with the people that I already know personally. Mm. Uh, and that's just my relationship with it. Connect meaning uh, two way street. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like I don't, re I don't really respond to, to, to the DMS. You can't cause there's right. too many, but what you are modeling is, 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 a, a network of close relations, you know, the people that you work with and Dennis and people that we've talked yeah. about and Tyler and, you know, people that you, OG Volta and friends and and colleagues that you work with, us, you know, the conversations crew and different circles that you're in and you're modeling that behavior saying, you know, this is, this is part of how I do this so that, you know, you can't be in everyone's circle, but you can be a sort of a, someone they can look to and say, oh, this might be an important way to approach this. And you if know, other yeah. people are allowed to know about it, then... Again, that's the field of possibilities in the future mm -hmm. should you decide to take a turn in your career and there's this whole network of people that you've built trust with. Yeah. yeah. You know? The the other thing and this also relates is the Michael kept using the term and I love this. It's like it's showing up. Well, you would show up to school, like Spider said. So you, this is where people are. Show up. You're going to you show up to the same place every day all day. It just sounds like that's a, yeah, you could, but that sounds like an overuse. And then you feel the pressure to quote unquote play the game because you're on it so regularly, you have to uphold this. And and actually knowing the rules of the algorithm, like it's better if you post at the same time on a certain day and schedule, like then you, if you actually know that, then you're going to do that. And that's, if it's part of work, I understand gaming the system in that sense. But as a human, understanding part of the game, feeling the need to play the game. Yeah. There sounds like a better use of your time than playing but, that but game. But hang on, hang on, because... What am I missing? How is it different than human beings learning to talk mm. Mm. to temper their emotions? Like, there are all these things we had to learn to do in order to communicate, and navigating the algorithm is just one more way that we need to learn to communicate. I know it's less interpersonal. It's not about though. posts. It's less it's interpersonal. It's not. It's not in this in the same space. There is something different. And I know I'm not trying to be a golden age thinker. Like I'm there down a, with with the yeah. fact that I can have a friend in in Mexico City. Right? Yeah, but there's I mean, a galaxy sized yeah. film on that scale. That's not. That's what do you not, mean? That doesn't hold water at all. I'm sorry. What do you mean? The idea that that. That sort of na I navigating you, na navigating the <laughs> algorithm is just another sort of. Um, do you yeah, want to do you want to 
communicate with people or not? Of, no, of course I, I do. But, but you on. learn, no, no, you no, learn no, public with, speaking. No. In mm-hmm. order to reach a broader audience, I'm, How and then go do a d- go I'm, do a TED talk and let Netflix do the and YouTube do the 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 distribution for you. What do you mean? No, I think let them game the system. With I think we, need we to as be, humans need to do that to interact with each other and and, and have um, uh, valuable conversation and connection and expression of values and sharing of values. Like you have to know how to. No, no. Let's, I let's, don't hold, let's like, break that doesn't it down. hold water well, either with yeah, me. Yeah, you can reach 10 people or you can reach 10,000. Let's mm-hmm. let's I mean, restate it's let's restate what we agree on. We agree that human connection I don't see the distinction. Is, is very important. We I think we've all agreed tonight again that you meet people where they're at. Mm-hmm. Your potential clients or friends mm-hmm. or uh, people you want to learn from, people you look up to. You meet them where they're at, right? And Instagram is where people are at. Um the huh. idea that what I'm taking issue with is the idea that you're saying, you know, people have evolved communication, sort of climbed over the many hurdles in terms of getting better at building networks, communicating. And the Instagram hurdle, the, the dynamics of the algorithm are just one more. Mm-hmm. And that is to completely discount the fact that the smartest, a generation's worth of the smartest uh, Stanford and MIT grads in, you know, behavioral science and uh, all of the incredible ways that the mind can be manipulated and gamed um, are not working for these companies to to mine and extract our attention. So, you know, this is obviously very current in the moment with with the Tristan Harris documentary, but the 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 to 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 imagine that this is some kind of neutral or blank canvas upon which we can draw our relations Who is not that? is not human nature is not that our social networks are not mm-hmm. they're full of ulterior motives and and human but, ugliness no well you're you're talking about the you know let's imagine there are two humans beautiful and ugly um it's just both. this all yeah. sounds like excuses not to no, I'm, not to communicate I, to hide yeah to well, like you know. but wait, hold on hold on uh, wait where? see that's my but that's the that's the that's ground zero for me why is it hiding to not be public so go with your persona i mean people can go live in cabins but and not like no and there's a there's themselves. a middle I mean, gr- no there's a middle ground this is not that's why i'm kind of with it doesn't hold water side of this argument what you're not hiding when you're going to the coffee shop and you're meeting Danny Klein for an espresso and a chat. You're not hiding when you're text messaging these people and then meeting up with them when it's not COVID and when it's safe. Yes. Um, I'm not in a cabin. I'm in well, Los Angeles. We're in Los Angeles and we're meeting humans. That's not hiding. You can not be on Instagram and not be in hiding. That's not that's, well. That's the that's the that's application of the idea. I'm just saying Instagram is more life. It's an it's a it, it's it, just more life. It's not. It's how it's we're spending our time. Of, no, it's, it's not. I don't. You, be, I don't believe that. If you look at someone's day, part of it was spent on Instagram. Oh yeah, it didn't no, go it, into the ether. It, that time was spent by that person. Well, it's part of life. You could it's argue that a lot of it went into the ether and well, nothing was retained because you just oh. flipped through ads all day. I mean, come on. And no, let's no, let's this, this, where, is, this there, is arbitrary I think there's a higher, negativity. No, no. That's what I'm saying. This is how people mm-hmm. are spending their time. This is how we're communicating. I mean, we if you're communicating. Like, like Dylan said in our thread, he wouldn't even know us. Dylan, who's you know, producing, editing, and mixing this. He wouldn't even know us if it weren't for Instagram. Again, to, to, you know, the power of communication, the power of connection, we're here live on microphones, four of us talking to our audience. Clearly, we've signed up to the power of communicating and sharing ideas, right? Um, it's, it's, it's understood. It's something we value. It's something we care about. Um, my narrow point is that Instagram isn't a neutral playing field for human communication. It's it's a quite a corrupted space what is? because of um, the, y- this, you you this. and I standing in a field yeah. talking. The field doesn't alter which of my words you of get to hear. Of course, it does. No, the, fe- but the, the field. But the geography does. does. No, it not necessarily. Has, the environment absolutely changes your emotional as state deliberately and how you, as mm-hmm. deliberately though. No. I know what you're. There, we're, I'm, we're, what we're, I'm we're saying, saying yeah, there okay. is no, no place where human beings are safe. If we, safe if from we say something specific that it don't like, it will not 
highlight us. Yeah, well, there's that. It's and different. The mountains don't not give you an echo of what you just said to hear it again. Let me let me finish the point because there's a it whole lets lot it come more. back. There's a whole lot more that I, that, yeah. I, that I agree with. You you're you're a hundred percent correct that communication is necessary, vital. We need it as humans. Mm-hmm. Connecting mm-hmm. all of that. Um, to use the flaws of Instagram as an excuse not to show up is not useful. In you know, which is which is the point you're making, um, which is which is why the question I asked was, what could it be mm-hmm. instead of bitching about what it is? You mm-hmm. know, I mean, I did mm-hmm. spend a second yeah. bitching about what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, what what you know, instead of bitching about what the kinds of conversations and the the the, I mean, almost daily we share one of us shares something on our conversation thread, an Instagram post that's just ridiculous, uh, ridiculous. laugh yeah. out loud ridiculous mm. yeah. the point is at this table and with michael remotely who's who's almost at the table <laughs> i'm at there's a table far 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 more about this that we agree on than we disagree on. yes um you're you're making a point that don't miss the opportunity to connect and i agree i have missed the opportunity to connect because i wasn't clear about what it is i wanted to say um, and I'm getting much clearer. And now that I'm about to dive in to the water, I want to know what I'm doing, what I'm about, because I don't of want course. to be one of the, you know, I follow a thousand and eighty people. That was the last, you know, I checked the other day. Jesus, that's, uh, a lot of that's well wow. above the Dunbar number. <laughs> sure, it absolutely is. And I think there are ten interesting feeds, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> you I'm know. With that. Um, I for me, it's a news source of who's making records, who's releasing. Is, is, is what. there like him? Is there a tool um, to mute all and start no. at zero, or I have to go through and mute every follower that I follow, every person I follow? You got to mute everyone. I feel like that would be so. I'm just still on this language of show up. Um, like I think because mm-hmm. like, I I try to only use it on quote unquote work days. Like Tuesday, I go live with Matt Rad, and Friday's mm-hmm. release day, right? So. I'm still trying to do that, um, or at least it, I can't be on it more than like 30 minutes in a day if it's not those days, right? Maybe you got to check in on something. But what if you just muted everybody and you checked in with the people that you want to check in and use that? Then my head goes to, okay, then you can just call them or you can text them, right? Which is what I normally want to do to connect. So my my point or my question from the beginning and still is now, um, cause I don't think actually it was, uh, it was answered. I could see John reading the billboard magazine, like sitting by mm. the window, going through the magazine, looking at the charts and everyone, you know, is looking at that shit on Instagram. Wait, what? No, no, it's, I'm not going to get a paper magazine. That's a waste. Yeah. But then where are the charts then? Like online? Like you just go to the Billboard website yeah, just, and just look the shit up. Well, Google. Is, I think it's interesting that John and I are, are we're, we're coming at the same problem from two different sides. John is on it, has a good following, has used it effectively. The stuff you're doing with Matt, particularly, is really strong. Um, I'm not on it. Have avoided it for years, um, mostly out of frustration, mostly out of a lack of clarity about what it is I wanted to say. I I just can't stand the idea of showing up and just being another one of those yeah. 990 Same. feeds that I don't mm. care about. Just yeah. like life. Mm. No, well, no, I'm trying in my life. No, no, I mean, like, I just, no, 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 no. This is talking, amplified life. How do you mean? We because, all want to be distinct from No, because other when we go, hold on, when we Not, go to no. the, co- when we go to grow, we go to the market, we go to the coffee shop, we know the baristas, we know the cashiers, we're friendly, we laugh, we smile, you go to the baker when you're in the south of France and you're going to the, to the butcher and you have a relationship with these people, they don't know everything you did all day that day. Sure. They don't want to know. Sure. This is what we're, this is the example. I don't really want to know what everybody's doing. They don't really want to know what I'm doing. Maybe they do, but they're going to forget it right after. So what's the point? Get something more of value. I don't know. I just don't know how many people in my, I follow maybe half what you, you well, follow. Yeah. I don't, I don't get that much value from the majority of the people I follow. It's mm-hmm. more for, oh, cool. Nice to see their face. Like that's sweet. That's sweet. I'm not, I'm not, again, we should just <laughs> talk about what we agree upon. I think it's a great place to connect. But my original question, I still don't know what the mm-hmm. answer is, or if there even is one, is, is it necessary to be on it? And the way you took it, 
um, where we went, Spider is the mm-hmm. you I'm talking mm-hmm. about, is this is the way that we have to learn how to communicate. No, no, this no, is no, where no. people that's, are. This no, is but school. that's not the answer to that question. Yeah. This is a separate thing. The, the, the answer to... Well, I'd like to have an answer because I asked the first question. Well, did, yeah, well, the, do you have to... I think the do you have to... Is it necessary? To, not do you have to. Is it necessary? That's, I mean... In the context of a music for, maker. Well, it's the question started is if you got off, if you got off Instagram for the next mm-hmm. year, would you lose work? Yeah. And it's hard to know. But I would think that it would have an impact on the, your, your total field of opportunity for years to come. What if mm-hmm. you went and did the things that are most valuable? Like say uh, Rory's example is the Live with Matt Rat is the, the, probably the most valuable thing that I have to offer on social media. And uh, next to conversations and what we're doing, I would uh, agree completely with that. And next to that, I would say that maybe um, learning how to cook Persian stews beca- and giving... Um, uh, you know, little bits of, uh, you know, all the 50 steps that go into it one of them, right? It all depends on what you want. Right, right, right. Yeah. All of those things, what if that was done somewhere else? Like, what if the food clips were done on YouTube? Um, what if the live was now done on Twitch or Reddit? Sure. Um, you know, and what if... I think you'd be missing an opportunity. Okay, that's I what think, I'm asking. Yeah, I, I have do, no, I'm I do not. Think you that's would. a strategy question. I say that as someone I mean, who has missed an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And, well, you know, my, my, the point where I was going a minute ago is that you and I, you're, you're one foot out the door and I'm one <laughs> foot in the door and, and, mm. and we're seeing the problem from, from the two sides. You've played the game well, and you feel sort of, you've, you see the utility, but basically you're unfulfilled by it. And I have been unfulfilled from the outside and sort of, you know, as I said, lacking clarity about what it is I actually wanted to say. And I've probably set a pretty high bar for, for like what, for, for what, what I would need to do, um, in my own mind. Um, but I think we're, we're actually both feeling the same problem, which mm-hmm. is kind of just the, the low quality of human connection on Instagram. Yeah, and that to me it translates into guilt for not being responsive to something that I have no response to. That's another layer of it for me, at least. Like mm. someone says something, like, oh, "Oh man, I feel like I have to respond." That's to you. why they invented the fire emoji. <laughs> you just, <laughs> I'm just, not good at that one. No, um, me neither. But if 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 all you do is go to Instagram and follow the first thousand people and just look at what they're posting, that sounds depressing. Well, why would that be the way that it would have been? Because that's used? what Rory's describing how he's used Instagram so mm. far. It's a, for me it's 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 very much if a you're not putting feed. yourself out there. Sure. Yeah. You don't yeah. even have a photo for your avatar. Yeah. And no. Your name is mm-hmm. generic yeah, as fuck. You're not going to get it as much back. Sure. I mean, that's, that's what I mean by hiding. You're yeah. you're deliberately mm-hmm. isolated and yeah. expecting to have a social benefit. No, I, or, I don't I don't. Um, okay. I don't expect. Well, like, let's imagine. Let's imagine that I value human connection, and I'm walking <laughs> down. Uh, I, I'm walking let's down imagine. a high street, right? I'm walking down a street in a where we're in a pre-COVID world, and I'm going past coffee shops, um, thinking I could have coffee. And there's probably some human connection in there, and I go past one coffee shop, and everyone sitting is facing opposite each other. They're looking away from each other or the people who are looking at each other are looking at their phones or fighting or whatever. There's a very negative, there's a, a lack of human connection in that room. And the next coffee shop I go to is like an Italian trattoria and everybody is talking loudly and gesticulating and laughing and sharing and passing each other food. If I was in the market for human connection, I would definitely choose the second coffee shop. Um, and as someone who values human connection pretty highly, um, Instagram that. has has felt a lot more like the first coffee shop, uh, quite quite an empty experience. Now, you don't need to in, you don't need to go in and test it for yourself to 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 sort of have some assessment of the quality of interactions on there. You know what I mean? I see the utility of it. You're but one half of those interactions. But I mean, I, what are we talking? You, we're, we're, you, you're hold on, ta- can, you're, I, can I say something for a sec? Yes. I, I feel like the metaphor for Instagram for me isn't one store or the other. It's going to a completely different neighborhood. And in that neighborhood, there are all kinds of stores. 
i.e. opportunities, like there are opportunities to connect with brands that you like or businesses that you like or influencers that you like or people that you like or, um, I mean, that kind of covers it, even products that you like. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole universe in and of itself of different things. So your feed, I mean, I unfollowed like, sorry to people that I unfollow, like 600 people or 700 people over the last few weeks. So I'm down to like 403 or something. And my feed, I've been able to see every post that's been posted on the feed. Um, stories I haven't cause there's more of them. Um, and it's been, it's actually algorithmically, it's really weird because now people that usually wouldn't have seen my posts are seeing them. Um, and it's just become more enjoyable for me. You have a very um, untrustworthy ratio, Rory. You've got <laughs> no posts and very few followers, like four, four. and you follow a thousand people. Sure. That's like the mm. least trustworthy actor on True. Instagram. <laughs> but again, <laughs> again, we're talking. We're, do you see what I mean? Like yeah, you're, you you're describing you the over. shittiest version yeah, he's of, he's of, what, of Instagram. You're canceled without even being anything. So, you're but, like the no, most unpracticed no, football player <laughs> okay. on the football field. Well, the, the idea, the, the untrustworthy, I mean, the, my answer to that is I don't really care. It's how if, the algorithm yeah. thinks. Like if, but if I'm, not, I'm not looking to, more, I'm not in the water. I'm not playing the mm. game. I'm observing the game. I'm, no, I'm, you're I'm standing on the street. a shitty version of the game. Yeah, yeah. You so, there's, so, yeah so there is a back that. room in the, in the coffee shop where everyone is ignoring each other, where it's a fucking, <laughs> it's, a, it's yeah. a secret party. It's a jam that I don't get to see. Okay, yeah. Honestly, I have another, you're telling me that? No, that I don't know. That doesn't make I'm, any sense. I'm with, what do you mean? I'm on I mean, both sides what, of this coin. What is coin. the Instagram that I'm not seeing? I think another where is the, yeah, where is the human the connection that, you're that I'm not, missing? What you're not seeing is, is the DM. I yeah, think the direct you, messages the DM? are Yeah, I use where, DMs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've had I mean, good, I've had, they, the, now now we're talking about a different thing. So we're talking about no, access it's, to it's people. No, but it's the platform. No, you know? we, we need to be careful because I didn't, mm. I didn't say that Instagram didn't give me access to people. I can DM people and I do all the time and I get mm -hmm. responses all the time. It's an amazing way to reach people mm -hmm. and connect, right? As, as in like a way to access them. It's like having mm -hmm. their cell phone number, right? Mm -hmm. And it's okay to call. You can't call someone, mm -hmm. but you can mm -hmm. DM someone, right? You can DM yeah. almost anyone. Right, mm -hmm. so even John and, Castelli and, and I did not, I did not diss that. <laughs> the way I framed the question initially, and it's interesting that we've ended up here. No, I love where, I love where this. I'm. I'm supposed to defend something. I'm untrust, an untrustworthy actor. No, look, which is hilarious <laughs> to me. It's the, ter it's, the ter it's the technical terminology. No, but your your point. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah that's you're not a contributor. Your point, you're not a your contributor. Your point that that there's some version of Instagram. That I that I haven't seen because of the way that I've used it so far. To me, I don't understand that. I see how you use it. I see what you get from it. I see how John uses it. What he gets from it. I see how Michael uses it. How many I'm of those people. one thousand accounts that you follow have you muted? Stories or none. So mm. it's just wide open. Whatever it decides. Whoa. Well, to give it, you. it if it, the stuff I spend time on, the stuff I like, I'm sure it it serves me more of. Mm. You know, they're still driving my engagement because I use it quite a lot. I'm on there, so I'm 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 I may be untrustworthy, but I'm valuable. So you're just leaving I'm, it. To I'm the a algorithm. pair of eyeballs. <laughs> I'm, I don't know why I'm taking this tone. Yeah, it's well, just, I'm, I'm I think curious what I, too. I, <laughs> no, so I think you're being think defensive think as I though am. I'm attacking your no, 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 Instagram no, no. strategy, I'm, and that's I'm not the case. I'm defending. I'm I'm defending our potential to cohere as a community because this sort of flippant negativity about Instagram um, <laughs> that is throughout the culture yes. limits our ability to use it to its potential for our purposes. Word that I were attacking Preach. our ability to cohere as a community because that's not what I was about. The question, the jumping off point was what could Instagram be? How much human yes, connection could we do? I agree. And, and, and we ended up that I am an untrustworthy attacker of our ability to cohere as a community. It makes no sense to no, me. No, no, no. We're, 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 we're definitely, <laughs> we've definitely gotten lost. Now, am I cynical about the machine of you're, Instagram? I absolutely am. But you're yeah. making claims about what Instagram is. But what I'm saying, you're describing the Instagram you've designed for yourself. I, it's, I haven't, it's yeah. how you're playing the game. 
I haven't played the game. I haven't designed anything. But, I've, I've observed the. I'm on the street. But you did. I haven't gone into the account, and you I, and you followed yeah, all of I those. I haven't gone accounts. into either coffee shop yet. I'm still. No just one else on the set up your account for you. You're not invited to any of those coffee shops it. at this point. You have to become another person. And then <laughs> yes, show of up course. Again. Yeah. yeah, that's the point. That was always oh, the can point. I, I can was... I can I pivot a little bit? Mm-hmm. I want to stay in Instagram land, but I practice something today. So some part of part of it that the part of it that worries me. Um, with the constant use, and I want to come back to the term showing up, because I think the idea of showing up is actually really um, a clever way to think about how to use Instagram, um, at least for someone like me who who finds it completely agitating uh, most of the time. And um, thinking about multitasking and listening to um, this gentleman on Sam this morning for a second time and him talking about when we flip to our device um, instinctually, for whatever reason, brainstem is telling us we want to look at this device. We take our mind off what we were focused on, and the amount of time it takes to reorient back to the task that was at hand is is exponential. And we're not aware of it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to pretend like I know. But today I practiced, and I was list- I was um, reading the Seth Godin book, right? And then I was like, I'm going to check my phone, and then I'm going to try to come back to this paragraph. I'm going to see if I remember it. I was in a flow. I was reading. I'm, I'm not dyslexic, but with like spider, it's, I've, it's really hard for me to read whole books. Um, I have to read really slowly. I don't really retain very well. And it's a shame because I love reading books. I love the act of it. But I was in a flow and I retained the majority of maybe the first like five pages. Then I checked and then I read that six page like seven times. I had to reorient myself into the flow, right? So we're constantly breaking the flow. And when you're trying to be creative, you don't want to break the flow as much as you possibly can because that's where the best shit happens because you're unaware of the best shit actually happening and then you just realize it happened and then that's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, I break my flow because I'm checking it, right? Just because. Now you're having um, whatever coffee shop you choose to go to in real life, um, you can have different kinds of interactions at, at, at both of those types of coffee shops. If you go to the one that everybody's looking away from each other or on their phone, then you don't have to interact, right? Then you get to be your isolated self. You go to the priest, you get your espresso, you go. The other coffee shop potentially has some friendly table of, oh, clearly they're Irish, so I'm going to go say hi and 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 talk to them, see where they're from, mm-hmm. um, and, and it, it's an easy connection. But the connection ends there. Maybe someone goes, "Oh, what a what a jolly lad uh, that man was." How did he say his name again? Right? <laughs> like, there's a little bit of a story that they can go home with, tell their kids, tell their friends, tell their aunt, uncle, whoever they're about to see. But on Instagram and on social media, that story stays there well beyond the moment in time. So you you and not for other people because other people already forgot about what you did. So. But you didn't forget that you put it there. So you're still like, wait, who, 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 like, uh, um, I, I'm going to re- keep out who I was talking to about this because I don't want to um, bring too much attention. But I can't, people look at who sees their stories. Like they look, it's a feature, right? You can look to see and you can, you can, um, you can direct a message you can encode, um, let's use that language, encode a message to a person or two uh, through Instagram, right? And then you can see if they looked at it. That's what you want to spend your time on? Seeing who saw your story? Like, not you, I'm not. Lo- yeah. I'm looking at you, but the general you. Hmm. That's how young people, and I'm young, are using this platform. And the amount of time that you'd spent looking at who looked at what you kind of thought was cool for a split second and who knows if you even still think it's cool <laughs> that's what you're wondering about instead of making something sick or reading something sick or doing something else that would offer your life more value that's my pushback on the necessity of it being um available for work and the cost benefit so what i'm asking the question in order to cost benefit um and kind of risk reward uh anxiety levels mm-hmm. here and saying okay cool if i lose out on a little bit of work well is my sanity a little bit more intact um and because some aspects of it are irresistible to you not i mean to me sure and, um and, and not no no accident. no i don't look at who looks at my i'm not saying that's, i didn't even know you could do that specific that. thing we're, yeah. if we're talking about downside yes that would be any downside would be your uh, 
deciding to spend time there, but there's some negative behavior that you can't resist doing. Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm, yes, I'm sure I'm that, not alone that in that. Likely in most people can't yes. resist doing because... I mean, this is what it's designed because for. Because the brightest minds of a generation have hacked our responses to visual and emotional stimuli that's the whole point of it yeah i don't to, see this as sorry sorry mm. i don't see this as flippant negativity towards a potential way of communicating i don't see this as flippant yeah okay. cultural culture wide there is flippant criticism oh, sure. that mm. misses <laughs> misses the point yeah i just wanted yeah. to clarify we're, that yeah we're not talking yeah. about kim kardashian posts like we're not that and the sort of She's you know damn genius fi fish lips in sort of sexy poses whatever that's not what we're you know that's n that's not you know and I, and i i think we're i think what you're saying john and is that okay this is this is the town square this is the coffee shop where everyone is this is the place where everyone goes to hang but it isn't the it isn't the sum of human connection right now there's a, there's a lot of other ways to do to do it and use your time and you know given that that we have people listening who are considering how much of their energy energy they should yeah. put into it. It's an important and, topic to consider. Yeah, I think it's on both sides. Mm -hmm. I and think it's good. There's there is incredible potential for for your business on Instagram. That's yeah. that's a fact. There is incredible potential to lose a lot of time on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. And well, that's behavioral. Again, that's 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 a discipline. Everyone has to figure out like what their pitfall is. Yeah, but this is on a really grand scale, right? Again, mm -hmm. so the songs I'm mixing keep getting shorter. I made a joke a couple episodes back that like I mixed a whole EP and every song was two minutes and 12 seconds. Back to I, the 50s. I just mixed something that's mm -hmm. minute 52. Like it's not even a whole mm -hmm. song. <laughs> and my brain, hearing hearing scientists and, and researchers speak on on these bits of of social media platforms and, and, and their, their um, undeniable um, intentions. It just makes me question, what, are, are people just giving up on what something could be because they just got distracted? And, like, and they come back reorienting, reorientating, um, reorienting to the subject and the task at hand going like, oh yeah, that, that's, oh yeah, I guess we're done. Versus, really interrogating what's being created really really investing in okay is that like you 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 make a 19 you make 19 songs um fully produced written and you could pick 10 for a solid album and instead you put out 19 mm. it's like that's not mm. that's just because you don't want to go back through them if it's as simple as dopamine then we should be just as suspect of gaming and romance and anything else that has similar impact on the brain. Yeah, I think it's a bit beyond. I mean, I'm not. I'm not an expert, clearly. But yeah. what I'm hearing is it's a little bit more than. But just game, dopamine. Respect, but games are designed for the same to have the same kind of neurological interactions. I the, mean, it's yeah. really. Yeah, it's still, and that's happening too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just another so to, version so of to that. So to take so. a break to play Call of Duty on your phone, <laughs> are you going to come back and be a more mediocre artist? Um, you, I don't know. It's a good I question. think you might be. It's a good yeah. question. I think, I no wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I think you might be. But that doesn't say anything about because you're not what, doing that what, as regularly. What an individual. You're, it's not should as just, easy to go play an hour of Call of Duty as it is to pull out of your pocket this thing. And look, uh, look. Yeah, I guess we're um, now. I'm at the point in my head where I'm like, all right, maybe I'm bogged down by this for sure. But I think it's some really important consideration for the the healthy balance of okay cool so how much work can you uh drum up and 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 um on the platform versus how much time are you spending on it mm -hmm. I, and yeah that I, actually led me to a thought that i had on my walk today which is you know a question around look it's an amazing tool for business do the people that run businesses know how to run a business do they know how to get sales are they good at it like are they good yeah. at connecting with other people because you could, like, I think what's important about Instagram and a benefit from a business perspective is it's able to attract and drive people to you if done correctly and, um, and all the other things we talked about. But 
can you do the next step? You know, can you take the next step and really grow a business from that? I, I think you can. I've seen the data that shows it for the audio engineering community. Like you absolutely could find work and a lot of it through the platform, um, you know, at different tiers. But I think a lot of, I mean, there's only so many engineers that can take the top tier artists anyway. So for every other artist, they're on Instagram promoting themselves and there's plenty of ways to connect. So I think yeah, that's good. That's good it, it's sort of a tangent, but I think that's another thing for engineers to be thinking about is, I, am I an audio engineer or am I a business person uh, whose business is audio engineering, therefore needs to, I need to sell that product. I can do that through this platform or I could dick around on this platform. Um, so if you take the dicking around on the platform and it's just scrolling through stories and posts, yeah, it's all the negative things we're talking about. If you learn how to color backgrounds and use the tools and uh, use the DM and f learn how to find suggested followers and things like that, and you can meet new artists and connect in ways and keep them engaged and have them know you, then it becomes a totally different tool. It's like a parallel universe. Like it's not the same thing, you know? Like, I mean, Call of Duty Mobile, I'm probably not getting any business from that. Uh, I don't go on there too. It's in a way that is me scrolling through a feed. Um, but with Instagram, it's different. It's kind of both. It's a slot machine and it's this business driver. And I think that, again, people very unintentionally get on the field and they start playing the slot machine game when they should be playing the football game, <laughs> you know, the, of the field that they're on. And um, it would serve them better, I think. Um, otherwise, yeah, it, it's completely useless otherwise, you know. Um, so that's, a, that's, that's a great, my thought. That's a great place to close that. I yeah. mean, yeah, I think, I think, you know, my, my observation, colored as it is by not being on the field and playing, is that the power of this machine... There, there's a, a level of self-control required um, that most people don't have, um, and it's 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 cool to say you know, mm -hmm. it's this is sugar. You know, you shouldn't eat sugar if you don't want sugar. If you don't want to, you know, have too much sugar, you shouldn't go to the casino if you don't want to gamble your money away. You know, you should have self-control. The, the 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 machine is is very powerful. The incentives are are, are very hardwired in our brain, and it's not. I I think there, there, again, you you talked about my perspective of being sort of outside the game. So not having an honest read of it mm. because, because I'm not in it. I'm not seeing the utility of it. Mm. Um, and, um, I would say that the, 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 your perspective might be skewed by your, your self-control around the space that maybe other people don't share that you're, 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 mm. you're sort of able to use it effectively and not have it take too much time. Yeah, I mean, this is generational. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't up, know. Is Spider and I are the same generation, no, and just, I don't. No, think no, we have no. I know experience. the difference is people that grew up and had a phone with social media when they were thirteen, sixteen to yes. sixteen. It's that's what mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. generational. Like, yeah, my mom even asked me the other yeah. day when I get my first smartphone. I was like, oh, I was in my twenties. Yeah, I had a recording studio. I was running a business, and the first iPhone came out. Yeah, it's like oh, wild. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> like a whole. So I just don't like I don't yeah. I don't um res I don't um connect via text message like people that grew up that were born in 1991 mm, sure. do you know just it's just different ways of communicating yeah exactly because we didn't learn it at that way exactly but I think to give credit to that generation too there's going to be the entrepreneurs of that generation that can use the platform for um you know commercial yeah. gain and there's going to be people that are using it for manipulation coercion or just fuckery so and, i mean i, I think yeah. it's like it's gonna always be a blend um that ties you know. to spider's point earlier that that human connection will it, it continues it's mm, it's mm -hmm. it continues yeah. regardless of the format definitely um it's the monolith and and yeah <laughs> and 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 it will you i mean know. think about the elaborate etiquette games that people play to move forward in their lives mm -hmm. like learning mm -hmm. corporate jargon <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's, I just, I want to be careful not to, again, label Instagram as a thing because yeah. it really is, it's like a third of the, of the experiences, 
your curation of who you choose to follow and how you behave. Um, the algorithm's a third, and then what you're putting it into it is a third. You know, it's just mm -hmm. for a, a mental model to get your head around to what Instagram is. It's like Instagram, like if you show up at a party and you're charming and you put yourself out there, you might meet your wife or whatever. You know, it's, it's you're going to be invited to other parties. You're going to, mm -hmm. you know, it's you lift the mood of the room when you go in, mm -hmm. if you put yourself out there, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's all I'm pushing, all I was pushing back against is this definition of what Instagram is and what it's like to be on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this subjective approach to it because mm -hmm. objectively what I hear is just Instagram bad. And it's like, okay, well, Oh, uh, like what? what are we doing? <laughs> you know, like, that's like saying people so are bad. bad. Yeah, right. It's yeah, like, it's, it's like yeah, yes, yeah, it's there like, are bad do people. Them? Yeah, like let's dive into what a bad person is in your opinion, and maybe there could be some integrative thinking there to tie that back. <laughs> like maybe in that bad person there's actually some good, um, and or maybe something great even. So mm. that's um, that's why that's where we started. Is it what? How how good could this be? That was mm -hmm. the question. It, yeah, maybe it feels a little bit like how good could a guitar center be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think there's I I don't I don't, honestly don't really understand the blind spot about just how corrupted the 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 information exchange is by the algorithm by the intentions of the yeah. people who built this platform. I don't I'm not I don't really understand don't, why like yeah, th that, that understand. humans can can you know, can humans sort of play within this corrupted space? Of course, humans have played within corrupted structures. Well, that, what's you corrupted? Know. You chose to, to follow these people. What do you mean corrupted? I mean, the, the, the incentives that drive, the, 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 the incentives that drive our behavior on these, it's all about mm. engagement. It's not about quality. It's not about yeah. lifting humanity. It's about engagement. Mm. Eyeballs on ads, um, predicting where you'll be, what you'll do, who you'll speak to, and what they can sell you, and using that information. This is, you know, it's not... So what? <laughs> this is what advertisers have been <laughs> mm. doing for fucking 100 yeah. years. Oh, yeah, I, I mean... What do you mean? 100x right now. What do you... It's so... Yeah. Are I you mean, are you going broke buying shit from Instagram ads? <laughs> like, what are we talking he about? Is. <laughs> he is, man. That's why he got that new phone. <laughs> like what is the big QTV now it's Instagram junk like I'm on my 19th backpack <laughs> this theoretical yeah. corruption I get it like they're hitting you with ads at, at better timing than they ever have like mm -hmm. but is it is it affecting your purchasing like are you having financial problems because of it you see no, what I mean like second. what is the, no, hold on no, we're, no. we're we're pointing the the we're pointing at people at this table i mean this is a bigger thing of course it people are going broke buying things off instagram ads that they don't need what do you mean this is happening mm. daily but they would have done that on amazon or they would have done that on qvc or okay, at, can at, we, at, at walmart can, we, can, we, what that has to do can we tie rory, it yeah can we tie it to to rory's describe again rory's describing what instagram is and i'm saying this is not active in the way that you're describing. No, no I'm, I'm describing what I'm, I'm describing. Not, I'm not describing now we're talking at this juncture of the yes, conversation. Yes. We're talking about what the, the infrastructure of Instagram is, what the machine is. Mm -hmm. The machine mm -hmm. is a way of drawing in people and advertising at them, Just monetizing like their television. behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there is no, there is no guiding principle towards human connection. If, if human connection drives the the ad model and and the, the behavioral predictive model then they'll use it um, and it will be used and discarded at, at will right mm -hmm. um the, the the what what instagram and facebook and to a large degree google are are driven by is not inherently positive can it be bent into you know was there you, you look at something like communist Russia, right? And all of the all of the corruption, the corrupted ideologies, the corrupted information space, the corrupted relationships, the corrupted power structures, right? You know, I'm speaking here as a student of history, clearly. Um, hmm. You know, but 
Did people thrive in that space? Of course they did. Were humans inventive? Were they poetic? Were they beautiful? Were they connected? Of course they were. Does that mean that that was a good idea, that we should do it again, uh, or that we shouldn't question it, or that we shouldn't acknowledge mm. that? Um, just because someone was sort of preternaturally built to avoid the pitfalls of that system and doesn't mean that a lot of other people weren't crushed by it. And I think that, I think when I think of, you know, a, a common theme at this table is our, our hope to unlock our potential and the potential of others. Do I see Instagram doing that for a lot of people? I don't right now. Which again is why I asked the question, <laughs> how could it mm -hmm. be better? Well, because I want to be part of it being better. Yeah, I don't use it better. At, at the very simplest thing, I don't want it's to not put that simple. shitty stuff. Really I don't, is. I don't think it is. I don't think it I don't is. Think that's it it. Is. You can't change the design of the app. The only thing you can change is how you use it. Yeah, yeah, yes. But you cannot be on it at that all. Is, yeah. You cannot, John's on the way out. I've never been on it. So you cannot be on it at sure, all. Sure, of course. Like you cannot play the game. Um, but then so we the, all agree, though, that you could potentially you be missing lose, out on opportunities. You will lose business. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in agreement on those things. Yeah. Yeah, of course, the only thing we can do is affect the input and how how we behave and what we mm -hmm. offer it. That doesn't mean what comes out the other end has anything to do with what we put in. It's affected by it, but it's still... I don't know. No, that makes sense. I mean, it's definitely like, it's not one-to-one. -one. Like what you it's put not. in is not exactly what you get out, but it does influence it. Yeah. And I think what we're also, what, what I'm hearing that's also being put in though is a, a perspective of this platform's evil. I'm going to go in here, try to avoid all the evil or deal with the evil or shoulder yeah. that evil, you know, and it's all like... All you have to do is nobody, not buy things. Nobody Forget said the word... And not, and not, nobody said the yeah. word evil. And yeah, not yeah, be yeah, mindless. That was not... That's nobody, not yeah, there's, no. wor there's words being put in mouths now. Yeah, no, no. That's not... No that's evil not. was said. We talked I mean, about it, incentive structures and... Yeah, corrupted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, corrupt. Corrupt, corrupt A corrupted said. information okay. space, which is... Different than evil and... But what's corrupted about the information space on Instagram? That that by selective editing of who says what and who gets to hear it, that the dynamic of connection is, is altered massively. You know, the, the, your, but your you're choosing the options. No, they're choosing I, it no, for you a lot of the time. You choose who you follow. Yeah, but we're uh, not getting no, 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 random no, no, no. shit. No, come on. Ads. I, well, ads is another thing, and but that's, that's what different. I mean. I mean, listening through your microphone, it's like not, it's giving you things that they, you might want and then showing In, you that you want it and then you decide, come on. Yes. That's not, a, that's not your, What's that's not your input. About, it, what is, how does that it's corrupt in, I mean, the information it's, space? It's invasive. It's personally so invasive. So that's a moral, it's a moral violation. It doesn't We're, corrupt the information space, but it violates privacy. Yes. I don't, I don't, yeah, that's, that's separate to yeah, me. Yeah, it's different, I, but it's, I mean that it, that, they're correlated. That it isn't, yeah, again, do you have access to people to have a direct one-to-one -one DM conversation? Almost anyone, yes. Like, will I get a response from Diplo? I won't. But if I want to speak to a young artist or uh, another mastering engineer with a question, I'll hit them up and I'll get a response. Um, or, or someone wants to hit me up, right? So I have access to have direct one-to-one -one DM conversations. But is the, is the space of ideas in some way neutral or uh, uncorrupted? It absolutely is not. You know, your, your behavior is shaped. Like I said, take any young woman, any woman between the ages of 16 and 30 and look at the amount of cleavage. Swipe through the history of her posts and watch how it changes. It's almost, you know, a law of nature at this point that the, the shots get more and more prov provocative, more and more, because the algorithm rewards that, right? Now, of course, is there a strong uh, or many strong people who can avoid that? Of course there is, right? But the incent there are a lot of people who fall prey to it because they see that the posts where they are more overtly sexual, you know, dress less, whatever, get, get more likes, are favored by the algorithm because they keep the eyeballs on the app longer. And um, that's a corrupted information mm -hmm. space. But that is also not a, that not like, not all of that that persons. I'm saying girl, you know, but not all of that persons. My question uh, is, why are you following her? 
Right. I'm not following her at all. He's not. I mean, well, so we, how we, is your information space corrupted then? If you're not following her, I don't, I don't understand. this is what I'm getting at. It's like I don't understand. It's how you use it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, no, that's not that. You're no, just describing dude, you're, like problems with human nature, and like, what do you do with that? No, it's you not. You just it's, like avoid life. Like I don't understand. I, I, I don't. I don't understand how 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 the. I don't understand right now. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. I don't know how the complex sort of behind the scenes juggling of what we get to see, what we get to see when isn't mm -hmm. being given the credit for how powerful it is but we choose the options we do not choose the options no we you've do not. said you follow a thousand people N no i mean that those are the options but do i see a thousand posts from a thousand people every like let's assume they all post it i don't information is favored to me mm -hmm. yes and what's favored is what holds my attention not what is useful to me, not what builds human connection, so not follow, what makes humanity fewer. greater. This is what I mean. Like, right. you, It's like you're subscribing to 100 magazines and expecting to oh, read them all. Oh, no, okay. So let me, let me try and come at it one last way. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're taking my critique of, of Instagram, such as it is, as being based on my experience. No name, make no name, no posts, <laughs> no photo. <laughs> never intended to be a public um, account, right? I'm talking about things I have learned about Instagram and Facebook and Google over the years from all of the trusted sources that we have, sure. um, which has now bubbled up sort of into the public consciousness. This stuff is through, no secret through. to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, yes. you were, were key um, to, to helping me find some of this stuff, right? Um, so from that viewpoint, how distorted our access to information is by, we call it the algorithm, but by the people who, who seek to control our attention, to hold our attention. That is a huge, huge thing. I agree. You know, now that is separate to what my feed is like. My, you know, and is your feed more curated, serving you better, driving business for you, of course it is, you know, like there's no doubt, you know, <laughs> is John's, yes, is Michael's, yes, you know, and... Mine and, looks like a magazine that I made. Yeah, but you're one of a kind. Yes, this no, is... No, but I'm this saying... This is irrelevant, I'm sorry, I'm but trying to like... not. I'm it's, trying to come at it from different angles too, it's just not yeah. really... Like, I, I want to go back to your example of the, the over-sexualized teenager mm -hmm. and your comment of human nature. You think that, and I could, this could be completely wrong, but are you saying that this 14 year old um, has to go to the pharmacy to pick up, you know, Kleenex for her mother because her mother is sick? She goes out into the public and she notices that people are looking at her. So she's now more incentivized to over sexualize versus. That happening 15 times a day, maybe more, rapidly over the course of, you know, going through puberty and the, the, the onset of adulthood. You don't think that that could be mitigated by not being on there then versus going to the pharmacy and getting a look? So those aren't different things and that's human nature. two things in there i don't it you're right to point out that this happens in real life young women mature they discover sexuality and they leverage it in different ways um and men sure mm -hmm. yeah um but you know in this case i think we're talking about young women because of the um statistics yes the concerning suicide and anxiety yes. depression statistics that is a completely separate issue to um um, Rory having a corrupted experience. 
I, I know. I'm, I'm just trying to take a Rory out of the equation. Yeah. Because and, and I know there are, ju- there are issues with Instagram. That's, and that's what I've been but, speaking But they're not primarily. doing they're that not, intentionally. What I'm saying, they're, but, ra- but they're relevant they're f- to but, you. No, no, of course, of course. But this that's is what I'm saying. But we've, I mean, I think we've been trying to have the more broad conversation the entire time mm-hmm. and taking all of us that, the three of us on this side are pretty good at it. Well, whether we should all get off of Instagram is a totally different conversation, like a societal thing. Like that's, we're talking about showing it where people mm-hmm. are and- we're, yeah. we're saying what Instagram is, and I'm just saying it's not that. But it yeah. is that, too. And not I, limited to that. Yeah. Of course not. Nothing's limited to It's not to a description anything. of Instagram. It's a, it's, it's a description of how Instagram can be used. It's not a description of what it is. But you're saying if you're not good at curating yeah i don't want, never mind i actually want to just <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think we've we've what whatever progress we've made i mean the 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 point the the goal here i guess the you know what what i was driving at with the original question is i imagine there there are a lot of people who are somewhere you know you look at the four of us at the table john's using it effectively but wants to be very careful with how he uses his time and attention Smart. Right. You're using it effectively and enjoying it. I'm using it ineffectively. And I have a daily reminder of like how amazing life can be in my two children and how bad mm. a poorly curated feed can be, right? <laughs> so the 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 toxicity that I'm describing in in the in the in the institutions, the 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 design of this platform is something that I think about a lot because of the effect that it's having on human well-being right yes and then we have michael who's an expert like you know he's not good at it he's an expert Mm -hmm. in how instagram works and so we have these four differing perspectives at the table and the point of the exploration as as clumsy and as it was is that we're we imagine that there are people who are somewhere between any one of these four poles Mm. uh, or somewhere outside who are looking who are wondering what to do next with it should they double down should they what should they do with their instagram <laughs> you know how do you how do that's, you use it that's why i brought and, it up exactly and, that and we're and we're we, you know at different points you know michael makes very compelling business cases for for how you should use it effectively and you john are making very compelling cases for how you should spend less time looking at your phone and um, mm-hmm. and we're sort of trying to explore this space and help mm-hmm. maybe people illuminate some stuff so that people can maybe make better decisions, you know? Uh, so with that, I mean, you know, do I, do I want to have, do I want conversations to be this difficult? I, I don't, but if it's in service of something, if we're trying to get breakthrough and get a better understanding of what Instagram is, what it could be, how to use it effectively, what a better version of it would be like, how our culture, you know, us at the table and our community, the music community can drive change in it. That's useful to me, you know? Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. And, That's why I thought it was a topic worthy of discussing. Is totally. Yeah. We're all thinking about it. And this multitasking thing really got me going on it because I really have a hard time reorienting. And it's if, crazy. And yeah. I'm a really focused human. Yeah. And if, so if it if it does that to me and I'm not lazy, I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah. I realized it was getting me. So <laughs> must be getting a lot of people. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think it needed to be discussed. And yeah, I don't even important. think we're done with it. No, no, no. We're, we're it's complicated. It's, we're, it's a very complicated, layered uh, issue and, and topic. And I mean, I think it's helpful to summarize a little bit and bring uh, collectively, like summarize something actionable uh, just from where we started to now. I feel like having... I hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? Yeah, that's new. Okay, no, no more echo. Mm -hmm. Um, I think discipline's a big part of this uh, game, and I'll continue to use the word game because I think it's highly gamified, um, very slot machine-esque, even with pulling down to refresh the feed. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. You know, all of that is gamification. And so... Discipline is is probably the first and foremost skill uh, to to hone 
um, in service of a lot of things in your life, but specifically Instagram. I also think intention is really important. Like, what are you using this thing for? And who are you following? And how many people are you following? Like, I think the reason that Spider's Feed is Spider's Feed is that he is highly intentional and with YouTube and Spotify and everything. So it's like, you know, he's like the the full extreme, you know, like <laughs> like super, super curated. But it it works. So clearly it's possible. Um, now, obviously, not everyone's going to be as disciplined or as curated, but I think at least knowing that there is that side is helpful to say, okay, well, maybe I'm a five out of 10 on this uh, discipline scale and maybe I could work to being a six, whatever that means for that person, you know, like, um, and maybe I could curate my feed a little more. Maybe I don't need 10,000 followers or f to follow 10,000 people, but maybe 400 is good enough or 50. Um, and being intentional, like maybe I should you only reply to DMs once a day at a certain time. I know a lot of influencers, there's a friend of mine, she's like like 30 or 50,000 followers or something. And I, like I asked her about how she interacts with the platform and like you'd think that she was on it all the time, but she says like, I only respond to direct messages like one day of the week at a certain time. Like it's very... Mm -hmm much like precise, but like the stories are all queued up, the posts are queued up. You'd think she was on it all the time. Um, so it feels that way to the the customer, but um, for her, it's not, you know, holding her captive in any way. So, you know, I think curation, discipline, intent uh, is, is super important. I like that um, a lot. Yeah, it's a uh, solid yeah. wrap up. Yeah, I had a, a one of our questions for this week or just something I noted was, the question, what is your phone for? You know, mm. just to, like, what's it for in your life? And that's the intention piece, right? Like, what are you, what do you, what do you mm -hmm. really want to do with it? Not what are you doing? It's like, what, what are you setting out to do? You know, I think that's really, I think a lot of people are kind of sleepwalking on Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. um, probably most people. I like that you need to know your story in order the, to use it. Like to communicate, yeah. to communicate effectively, At a high level. you have to, ha you have to mm -hmm. know who you are. Well, as a business or a, there's a lot of stories on there. <laughs> they're they're mm -hmm. just not very compelling. There's right. even a um there's, there's even the, uh, a new uh what? TV genre of ambient TV that is designed to view while being distracted by social media. <laughs> Dude, I can't even take this seriously. I mean, this is real life. It's incredible. So now TV shows are being designed to compete with social media. Because that you pull down on the screen to see the next uh, scene, yeah, you know, right? Like yeah. who done it? You know? No, it's ambient. It just runs in the background. No, it's yeah, meant yeah. to just be on in it's the back. It's like while music. You're on your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's comfort, like yeah, yeah, kind of a comforting. Because they know people thing. are on their phones anyway, so yeah. why make like sick TV shows uh -huh. if people are just flipping the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think something I didn't mention, and I really should, because it's it's super important, is that all of those things are really important: curating, being disciplined being in, intentional, but also acknowledging that this is a potentially slippery area, slippery terrain, you know, like it's not like flat ground, easy to walk on. Like it's possible that you could slip and like be in a hole of Instagram for an hour, you know, like, so <laughs> knowing that like what you're playing with, what game you're actually, you know, mm. playing is important. Uh, it's definitely important. When you're done. It, so it's knowing when like, you're done. Geez. So it's kind of like, ke yeah. like ketamine. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of go, you kind of go in the hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it kind of is. Well, they have apps for that. They have apps that'll give you just an hour of Instagram every day. I mean, if you're serious mm -hmm. about being disciplined, you can yeah. automate it, you know. Right. Yeah, and that's that's the point. Freedom of the app or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. point of, of, of yeah. the exploration because some people think, well, if it's good for business, I should do more of it. I right? used Freedom yeah. App for yeah. a while, yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want to paint the picture that it's good or bad for people, um, right. but it can be because it can be both uh, on on the furthest extremes. It could be amazing for people and it could be horrible for people. So, um, and then everything in between. So, you know, I think it's it's useful for us to at least show both sides 
and show ways of, of kind of achieving um, success, um, especially I, I feel personally responsible for it in that I'm putting a lot of businesses on the platform or at least helping them be more on the platform. So I want to present that full picture because it is important and people are worrying and questioning it and curious about it. Yeah, you're, you're the good guy. Yeah, you've, you're, you're the one who designs posts telling people to drop their phone yeah. right? and go <laughs> yeah, exactly. outside. I mean, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because the, those posts like always are shown less on the platform. You know? Nope. Hey. Um, hey. Oh, wow. They just there dropped off. I was going to say it's kind of time to wrap yeah. up anyway. Well, that's, so. Yeah. That's the, I think he did a nice little sum up. It was the Instagram. It was really good. The gods of Instagram just cut him off. He was about to say something controversial. Dylan got kicked out too. Um, yeah. Well, that was, that was interesting and difficult and uh, confusing at times. But there's a lot. There's a lot to it. It's yeah. a big. It's a big topic, and where it, it's 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 interesting how how um, hard it is to explore because we have such our our view of it is so personal. You yeah. know, each each of us. So I wanted um, to examine it in our music creative sphere. Yes, I don't see it talked about, and everyone that makes music is on Instagram more than the amount of songs that I'm seeing come out. Completely. And that's a that to me is a bit of a problem. And that's why I want to at least articulate my thoughts on it a little bit. Yeah. Um, Agree 100%. I it's, think it can be used by someone and, and coached by someone like Michael on how to use it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but until more people are coached by people like him. Um, There's a lot of sleepwalking. Yeah, it's a lot of sleepwalking. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my thought. And I wanted to talk about it tonight. So I'm glad we did. Cool. All right. Let's I'm call good. it. Yeah. Sorry, we lost Michael right by the end. Sorry about that salmon. But it was really, really good <laughs> to have him back. Um, it's, it's really nice to have his voice in the conversation yeah. again. And the technology is incredible. It's a must. You know, it's just it was just the same as if he was here. Conversations is produced and mixed by Dylan Seals. The Conversations theme was performed and recorded by the Hazelrick Brothers.